Okay, ladies and gentlemen, sorry for the pause again. Um, I did get, I did manage to get Drake, and I would like to welcome um, uh, Tanat and Sunfire. You are live. Hello. Hi, Hello. welcome to the program. I think we finally got everybody connected. Drake, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Okay, good, good. <laughs> yeah, um, the powers that be, I don't think, are um, wanting this to go on. And for some reason, I'm getting now some feedback. It sounds almost like somebody's eating potato chips. Um, but it, it, it <laughs> anyway, um, uh, okay, but uh, we do have you both live, and I apologize to everybody for the um, the, the lapse there. Um, uh, Drake, would you like to speak for just a moment while I gather? We we have a lot of continuation questions. I don't know if you. Um, wanted to present a little bit of something about tonight's show before we go right to questions, or um, sure. But I, I'm, I'm okay. All right, so you go ahead and um, you and in, you can introduce um, Tanath and Sunfire um, and a, a little bit about the program while I pull the questions together now, and um, we'll be starting momentarily, gang. Okay. Well, uh, what I'm looking at is this: we got an ambassador, and we have. A uh, leader, a uh, commander in uh, Silver Legion, and um, I just happen to be—I um, don't know what you'd call it—a muscly uh, foot soldier in uh, uh, things. And what we've been doing is uh, helping the preparations uh, towards several things: liberation of the planet, get rid of the bad guys, and all this sort of stuff. Now. I know people have uh, uh, got a lot of uh, interest in uh, intel reports and things of that nature, and there's a couple of heavies getting ready to come on board with us, uh, dealing with uh, uh, a variety of things. So you might bear in mind that as this is uh, progressing, other things have been going on. This is not the only uh, thing that's happening. Now, the reason for the shows is... Two, give information. People can ask questions. It's the easiest way rather than trying to do an interview and um, somebody reading questions that you know may or may not uh, be relevant to what people want to hear. Now, there are things that you may not hear on here. Some of those um, different subjects that are uh, sensitive, if there's ongoing things, if there are uh, tactical issues uh, or other sensitivities, they won't be discussed. There's a great many of um, people in uh, very specific places who uh, actually do not want to be outed, uh, specifically on Terra, specifically on the radio. Consequently, we respect those issues. We respect those people, uh, be they ET entities or whatever. I do the same thing with my people in the intelligence arena. Now, here's the big fun and games part. Uh the United States military has been well aware for quite a while, and uh, I mean by a quite a while, several decades of the situation with the fact that we are not alone. You've been lied to, everybody, just like all the other stuff that uh, is covered on the other shows. The reason being, they felt that the, the people of the United States of America were too stupid to handle the information. They guaranteed, they felt absolute positive that everybody would get the shotgun out and go hunt ETs. Well, oh, it's more than that, I have, it's, Huh? It's way more than that. It's more than just well, that they thought that we were all too stupid. It's just that they had an agenda in controlling the spread and the dissemination of information. I ain't got that for yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on a minute now. If somebody really is curious, and I'll, I'll qualify what she just said real easily, it's called uh, Operation Blue Book. It's called the UFO-itis that uh, has been so prevalent for so long among certain people. Uh, people consider people that uh, uh, fool around with such things or believe in such things as some kind of nutcases. Well, that's all fine, well, good, and dandy. I don't personally care what people think of me. What I care about is the truth. Here's the truth. Several things are going on. We have a transition coming up. world did not come to an end on 12-12, uh, 12-21-12, so 
Uh, apparently, it's not going to come to an end. That's for one uh, one little thing to take note of. Now, the other part of this goes into several different areas. We have releasement of the collateral accounts, which financially will change everything that everybody's familiar with. Number two, because things change on a financial basis, our society is going to be in a situation where it is forced, our manner of living, to also start adjusting radically. If you add suppressed technologies, and I'm going to hit on just some uh, stupid ones, two to 500 miles per gallon on a carburetor. Everybody's heard of it. It's sitting on a shelf. I found out where. I even had the documentation at one point. I used to be a real regular snoop. Uh, the ideology that uh, a car can run on water, ooh, that's far out. They killed that man stole everything he had. Told his wife she opened her mouth, they'd kill her too. So she shut up. She told me about this personally. I talked to her. The uh, hmm, the rest of it is uh, swamp gas, weather balloons, and other forms of horse hockey and BS that the government puts out in order to hide two things. One, the reality of the fact that they can't do nothing about it. Big bad military can't fight back. Sniff. Well, here's the other part. As was mentioned just now, uh, absolute and total and complete control of the ideologies that we possess, let alone any excess knowledge, any kind of, well, what do you mean you don't got to put gas in the car anymore? Uh, the oil companies don't like that. Where do you think the money comes from for the government? From oil companies and, and raping the people. Okay, well, if you don't have to pay taxes on stuff or it's something that's not regulated or something they can put a meter on and charge you for, they don't want you to have it. They do not want you to be in good health because they make a lot more money selling you a, a little purple pill uh, that's the uh, Mr. Feel Good in, in a bottle uh, <clears throat> for the rest of your life rather than giving you a cure. Uh huh. They treat the symptoms. You will not find the word cure anywhere. The reason you won't is, as I said, money, moolah, you know. <clears throat> so what we're breaking this down to is what is the power? The power itself is twofold. One is information. He who controls information, if you don't know about something, it's hard to deal with it until all of a sudden you fall over it in the middle of the night or whatever. Uh, the other thing is financial leverage controls most of what we have been up against. If you go objecting to the government, they pull your mortgage. Whoo, you got to pay that sucker. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, your bills come due. Your credit card don't, don't work. Uh, you lose your job. You name it. Now, they've been doing enough of that anyway just for the fun of it. The ideology here is to, it again, goes into two areas. One is the absolute control. The reason you're having disasters is because they want to make you more reliant upon a an entity that's big big brother enough to take care of you. Well, um, my mama quit powdering my butt and changing my drawers a long time ago. So, uh, and I've been kind of radical about a lot of things. Uh, some of the things I've done in conjunction with ET have been uh, rather radical. From what I found out, I didn't know that. It just something needed to be done, and I did it. The um, things that we got to look at is uh, what's the real deal, okay? I have expressed, first of all, societal changes, financial changes, and we're looking at a transition going from one-dimensional reality to another. This is going to be drastic. It's going to be rather obtuse. It's going to freak some poor people out. Why? Because they don't listen to the show and get some kind of understanding and be able to get their head around simple questions. Um, this is the reason for the show. We're outing what they don't want you to hear. That's why we're um why we have technical difficulties for one. The second part of that is that um there are two classifications of entities. One good, one bad. Everybody's met the bad guy on the block one time or another. Um he usually is not nice. Well, You've heard of Agenda 21, where they intend to uh, eliminate population. If you haven't, go to the website, United Nations, Agenda 21. Look it up. It's posted. They intend to eradicate a whole bunch of us. Why? Because so they can have their way. The idea, idea here is to have a very select few in absolute charge of everything. 
and uh, a slave race, what's left of it, to service their needs. Basically, that's it. Well, there's a whole bunch of us that object to that idea, uh, to include uh, E.T. Now, everybody's heard, biblically, and this is going to blow some minds, of the uh, so-called end times and things are going to go bump in the night that you don't want to hear. Well, uh, the choice is simple. I have talked on, on my Sunday shows about freedom, that this is our basic last shot at it, and that we need to really get our stuff together so that it does come about, and we can fix things so that it doesn't happen again. Well, there's more to it than that. The ancient battle between the light and the dark is very real, between the good and the evil. If our Earth, our planet, our country, being the crux of it, falls to the bad guys, not only do they win, but all of the good, slowly over a period of time, gets stomped out. Now, we got enough fun and games dealing with government regulation, taxes, and other horse hockey that uh, has been foisted upon us that we have allowed to happen. So I took issue with that. That makes me a radical, uh, some kind of a nutcase usually, uh, which is fine with me, except that what I have decided to do is go at it from a truth standpoint. The best way to get to the truth is to uh, get with people that uh, are the real thing. These two ladies are the real deal. Um, <laughs> And you need to get used to the idea that there are other people, entities out there. Some of them look uh, pretty different from what we are, uh, but who cares? Uh, I don't, personally. I think it's pretty cool to have something that looks totally different from a humanoid-type individual. I think that's good. I think that's cool. And I will, uh, hopefully without embarrassment, ask a whole bunch of stupid questions about this, that, and the other thing. Um, just so I'll know. Now, the ETs, they look at us, and they don't believe it. They do not believe that a race with any kind of intelligence at all would act like we do. But here we be. So <laughs> they're kind of going, wow, man, did you look at that one, you know. <laughs> um, and I don't blame them. Somebody that's intelligent probably wouldn't have much to do with this. However, we are the key crux uh, balance point in terms of the existence of the light in relation to the darkness. It's supposed to be a balance of sorts, and that balance has been tipping in the favor of the darkness. So we're left with a with an option. Uh, it's more and, than that. It's more than that, Drake. No, but Not I also am looking at it in the favor of the darkness, but the Probably, darkness yeah, went I'm nuts. looking to fight for it. That's my take on it. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that the light shines. Hopefully I don't uh, stomp on too many things in the process, but I don't mind that either. But what I'm saying is that uh, the, the basis of existence could change dra drastically. Uh, and you're saying more than that, and I'll let you get into that. What I'm saying is that things could change drastically to a point where uh, you don't want to be anymore, and that's what we want to avoid. We want people to be able to enjoy the uh, grass under their bare feet, nice sunshine, uh, and decent weather and things of this nature. These things are coming with ET's help, advanced technology, and the listening of an audience to what's real. Now I'm going to turn it over to the ladies and let them uh, tell me how uh, I didn't cover it all. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to try to cover I it all. I'll tell you that right up front. There's okay, no way. Ten, ten, ten and sun fire, There's no way to cover it all. Straight. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, for one thing, it's more than just that um, the balance between the darkness and the light got tipped over. Darkness, in the meantime, also went kind of insane. In an ideal universe, which this was intended to be when it was built, uh, darkness and light would actually not be opposing factions, but working together for the harmony of all. There is no need for evil, yet somehow evil came into existence. And, you know, that's 
kind of where the root problem of all of this is, and we happen to be at the uh, the culminating, fulminating end of this. And that's why we're doing something, because, well, this planet and its people deserve a fair shot, and this universe and its people deserve a fair shot. Yeah, well, I'm fully in agreement with all of it. Oh, I know you are, Trey. <laughs> I've worked with you long enough to know this to be the truth. Some people understand I'm a little squirrely, too. That doesn't hurt anything. <laughs> Just makes you more fun. <clears throat> well, I think it's funny. I mean, it's comical to me that um, so many entities don't understand what you just said, that the harmonious uh, balance, whatever, however you want to look at that, uh, has been disturbed by the insanity. Well, what's, insan- what's insanity? Doing the same thing and expecting a different result? Or in the case of the insanity of um, the void, darkness, whatever you want to call it, um, that they got to uh, eat us up or... Uh, whatever. I mean, I don't. I never have. I mean, nobody can define normal anyway, because I don't. I'm not so sure it really exists. Um, I think there was some uh, definition. Well, people that don't cause cause harm. Perpendicular. Huh? Perpendicular. That's the physics definition of normal. Perpendicular. So you're normal when you stand up, and you're normal when you lie down. But I'm sitting, so I sure ain't normal. <laughs> okay. But, uh, you know, the, the things that I've seen and the things I've experienced, um, it's a lot of Star Trek stuff, ladies and gentlemen. It really is. And all of this stuff is is just about as absolutely real as it gets. People need to understand at least the possibility. People need to understand that the probability of uh, something that doesn't want to uh, hurt the cute little animals such as us, no matter how superior they might be, and maybe they could even talk to them and become friends. I think that's extraordinary. And I've talked to some of these people. I have a very good head for physics, and I understand uh, Tathna was this, was Tana. Um, uh, was it Sunfire? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the uh, the gist the gist of things is very simple. Um, I understand some of the uh, extraordinarily advanced physics that we are going to eventually here employ. And instead of having to worry about cutting the grass, uh, you tell the grass how, how what length you want it. And it's perfectly happy to oblige. You might have to talk to it about it. I don't know. I don't know if it, it's going to act like a teenager. Um, we have some people that are associated with us that do that. Uh, sometimes the people or entities that we run across are real dingle bats. Uh, some of them are, are um, not so insane as what uh, you know people would like to think. Uh, it's, it's 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 such a, a wide variety of of uh, interesting. Um, I never thought of that one before. Kind of stuff that uh, I'm quite honestly astonished a lot of the time. Wow, that's different, you know. So I'm kind of sitting here going, wow. And I haven't had, uh, uh, Tath, you can can explain. I haven't had a lot of experience with this, but this is really neat. Yeah, it is really neat. I think that's really the only way you can describe something like this. Um, All the things that we were told were nothing more than fantasy and science fiction. All those things exist. Now, it's one thing to sort of accept that as an intellectual proposition. It's another thing to meet Luke Skywalker <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. You know, it's, it's a whole different proposition than what uh, even what I was expecting. Um, you know, I've got my story about the ninja who followed me home. You know, <laughs> I went out cruising in another universe and came home with somebody who I didn't realize actually existed. Mm. It's marvelous. But, you know, these introductions are going to be a little varied and different. I think I've proved that tonight. And I'm not uh, looking to be extraordinarily correct, okay? What I'm looking to is looking to do is to be able to address to the average person who doesn't have a lot of knowledge of, of high-level high sciences 
who does not have necessarily belief in what we're talking about. But anyway, uh, they've seen Star Trek, and they're curious. What do you mean that's real? You mean to tell me I can walk up to a thing and punch it in and, and get cold beer out of it? Oh, boy. Well, uh, from what I understand, yes. Now, I don't know if that thing understands how many beers you've had and uh, cuts you off like a bartender or not. I don't. I'm not aware of those <laughs> things yet. But you, you can think of um, the idea that you can have living entities that are so extraordinarily different from you that your mind do, cannot perceive them other than a big blob of something, as an example. And yet, very intelligent, very personable. Um, and people have seen Ghostbusters, and they remember Slimer. He was real popular. Imagine a kiss from Slimer or a big hug, and you get an idea as to the possibilities. Uh, I feel, and Tad, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this may be a part of one of the reasons that handshakes and things of that nature are probably not the best way to start the conversations. Other than the fact but that pretty somebody, much not everybody has hands. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's another thing. You know, what do I shake? Um, so, you know, from a uh, we're the only ones perspective, uh, we're going to switch over to a population of millions of different uh, types of uh, entities. Uh, just about every configuration you can imagine, and some that you can't even get your head around. You know, you look at it and what is that? I wonder which side, which ends up on that thing. You know, uh, and in a, in a very common sort of a perspective, um, I've always been curious. So I look at the strange bugs. I see the whatever's going on. I love science fiction because it's imaginary. Supposedly, you can use your imagination, just run wild with it. What freaked me out was the fact that this stuff is real. That sort of you know. Wow, man, now what? <laughs> so the, my way of dealing with it is to get involved. The best way I know of to understand what's really going on is to have a conversation with an entity that, uh, as far as we're concerned, don't even exist. Um, that's given me the greatest insights that I've ever found. And then also being involved, experiencing it, get to see one, wow, man, you're a bit different. And it's looking at you saying, yeah, so are you. Uh, you know, so you mutually agree on, you know, yeah, uh, I ain't like you and you ain't like me and far out. Now what? Uh, so, you know, um, you have out there a listening audience that's going to ask questions that are not the type of questions necessarily that fit anything in particular, but that is their particular interest or curiosity at, the, at this point. As these things are answered, and I want people to understand this, it would be a good idea, whatever question you've got that uh, is particularly important to you, make note of what the answers are. Go back and listen to the archive um, if you need to. But be sure that you, you know, what is a succinct question? Well, what do they look like? Well, they look like everything that you can imagine. So that's not definable. Uh, what does a certain entity look like? Well, that entity has asked me not to uh, tell what it looks like. So you're going to be stuck with your imagination. Now, if you can understand something simple, and this was done very well by, by Star Trek, uh, you have several uh, races, uh, different entities um, in that, most of whom were a, of a humanoid type. They ran, ran across several that were not. So you have to understand that that was limited in certain respects, so that the audience could be a combination of entertained, and the stuff was not so far out that uh, it was totally unbelievable. And that's basically and PC was a lot less available back in those days too. Well, yeah, but you also have to understand, back then you had to watch your audience because you, you show them a little green man from Mars and they'll believe it. And at one point there was a little green man from Mars, from what I understand. So, you know. Um, it, it it all goes to the capability of our our ability to understand simple things. We're not alone. There's thousands, millions of different 
uh, entities out there, um, and the, some of them look just like us. You can't tell the difference. Some of them look so totally different, as I said, you can't even imagine it until you see one. I've seen a few that were really freaky different in terms of being different, but they were nice people. Uh, I'll say people because I don't know what else to say. Um, you know, we'll go from there. Uh, the way I'm seeing it, what do you guys think? Yeah, I, I hear we got lots of questions. Do we, Denise? Oh, yeah. From last time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, we should start hitting those. Uh, I would say yeah, there's like, some really interesting questions even um, like in the in the thread for this tonight's show. There looks like some really interesting questions as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's get her out. <laughs> we had questions uh, left from last week. Then we had questions that people asked in anticipation of tonight's show. I already have uh, 13 pages of questions, and we haven't even started the show. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get at it, I'd say. Okay. All right. Um, some of them are sort of kind of inappropriate, but some of them are not. Uh, but you can just kind of glance over the ones that, that would be best answered on your show, Drake. Um, for instance, uh, anyone know what's up with the Illuminati? Yeah. <laughs> what? We've, we've, we've yeah. done several things uh, here on the planet. We pulled their pants down pretty thoroughly, and they're embarrassed. Um, we've got some public announcements uh, dealing with the uh, subjects of power and uh, things of that nature that will validate some of the things that uh, I have talked about specifically dealing with uh, we the people and our ability to be free. So look forward to that. Um, hopefully uh, we'll get that get to that in the next couple of days in terms of my getting the knowledge. As I get it, uh, we're going to have a public post on the sh- on the uh, web website. Um, yep. And uh, we will uh, then also are looking to have a show uh, dealing specifically with the um, militias and other uh, public officials that have uh, finally stepped up to the plate. And I think it's going to be really awesome when this comes about. Absolutely. So the people are beginning yeah, to be yeah, like their uh, thing. And hopefully, then uh, in the near future, ET will be able to uh, culminate. Yeah. Anyone else uh, catch that official disclosure that happened there with uh, Paul Hellyer of Canada? Which one was that? Well, I, I caught a YouTube of it earlier. Um, I'll get it to Universal Voice, and they can get it up on the up on the Facebook. But yeah, it looks like we got some actual disclosure happening. So if people. Uh, you know, all these people who say, I'll believe it when somebody in the government says it. Well, somebody in at least the Canadian government has said it. So, there here we you go. go. It's starting. Cool. <laughs> yeah, where it's been hitting the hitting the fan in uh, jelly bean size things, there, we're, we're, we're up to, uh, we're starting to uh, smell some rotten eggs going into the fan and um, a few other things. And the chunks are getting larger all the time. <laughs> so where's them questions at, Denise? Soon to be Greyhound buses, right? Okay. Next question: yeah. Will us Terrans be provided with, say, a database of other races out there in space, their biology and their customs? It sounds like something useful to have to get familiar with the other races. Not in other as words, of yet. Be largely for manual? security. Well, Eventually, yes, but uh, for security purposes, that's not going to happen right away. Okay. Um, a comprehensive who's who is also impossible because we don't even know, right? Like there is just yeah. so many, many different groups out there that uh, it's impossible to categorically know all of them. But you get sort of the, the who's who with the local zoo for sure. I think um, eventually, um, and, it, and it will not be until after, the, you know, after a general disclosure here on Terra, but the Federation is planning to provide, I guess you could say, um, a hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy kind of thing, or, but it won't, it'll only be what, um, like, the member planets of the Federation and the system, um, or I, and I think more actually kind of like a tourist guide to the, to the Federation, but, mm-hmm. you know, that's one of the things that is being planned. But, yeah, definitely because of security reasons and other reasons, it's not going to be until after general disclosure. Okay. 
Good. And I'll let everybody know, too, that Universal Voice isn't going anywhere anytime soon and that, um, of course, with Drake, Drake's help and the assistance of people like you, um, beautiful ladies, that, you know, we will be able to continue to share with people, um, you know, what things to look out for and what, you know, help help to guide people. <laughs> so, okay, um, next question. Um and I'm, for some reason, I'm getting a lot of static from somewhere, but um, I don't know if you guys uh, yeah. can hear. Yeah, I, I think that might be Sunfire's connection. Oh, okay. So I'll okay, see honey. what I can do here. Okay, um, all right. Um, let's see. Um, which ET races do the biospheres belong to who are hovering over the North and South Pole? We've answered that before. That's the Arcturians. Arcturians, okay. Um, do you folks know if Carl Sagan was Cabal? I don't think that he might have been, perhaps more like aware of them. Some uh, seen some talk about him being of the cabal and involved in all their nastiness, but I don't believe it. Do you? I don't have personal information on Carl Sagan, so I uh, I can't answer that question. So far, I might. She's currently disconnected. Oh, I'm here. Oh, um, you're back. Excellent. Is who? Carl Sagan, Carl the uh, Sagan or famous Sagan. astronomer. No clue. I don't really, you know, I haven't really been keeping track of him. Uh-uh. What about you, Drake? Do you have any knowledge of that? Um, the knowledge I have is not supposed to be given out at this point, but uh, I heard that the man uh, was uh, correct in some things and not so much in others. Okay. Um, it, it's, it's like this. It's hard to be definitive about things unless you're directly in it. Um and a lot of it right now is sensitive to what we're accomplishing. So uh, there's a lot of it that cannot be disclosed. It's like the intelligence information that I've got right now would blow some minds, but it's going to wait until the right time to release it. Simple. Okay. Are Tanat and Sunfire, as, as uh, are, in, are they involved in a feud along with Drake with the OPPT folk, and do you really think that they're on the run, and if so, from what? I don't have any information about the OPPT. Uh, I'm not involved in the financial side of this at all. Yeah, I um, do. I I was going to echo um, Tanaf's things. I have nothing to do with the finance, the financial end of this battle. Okay. And Great as does. far as you know, as far as my opinion on the OPPT, I think I you know I think I support Drake on that. Okay. Um. Great. Right. Yeah, um, what you have to understand, people, is that the thing is a, uh, uh, it's a farce. It is not real. Uh, I've talked to the principals involved. i talked to the man who wrote the paperwork. That's not the same paperwork, among other things. Um, you're dealing with thieves. Uh, you're dealing with liars. Uh, I would suggest you be very careful. What are they on the run from? They're on the run from the authorities. They did some things that they are not supposed to do that they knew better than to do and were told about, and they did it anyway. You do not go into um, attempting to uh, start civil wars in countries. That's a no-no, period. It also violates a whole bunch of different uh, international laws that we have against such things. Um, Now, I'm not saying that a um, change of administration uh, by, in some cases, by whatever means necessary, may not be the case. It may be that that is the only way. However, uh, you don't go uh, calling for uh, the people to rise up against uh, uh, authorities that have not uh, gone after the populace. Uh, that is the biggest, that's one of the biggest no-nos I can think of. And uh, they're hiding out simply because uh, the authorities, international authorities, are trying to find them. They want them to answer some questions. And I think it's interesting that they um, decided to take off and run for the hills instead of answer the questions. That tells me that they know that they did something wrong, and they also know they're going to have to pay the piper at one point or another. Uh, Eventually, all of these things will come out, as you'll see. Next. Okay, furthermore, is the OPPT actually trying to defraud and take money from individuals? Absolutely. Um, They're also putting together things that uh, are not kosher. These little uh, courtesy letters and whatnot, 
are uh, going to get you in trouble. Don't use that stuff. Uh, you don't know what you're doing. And they're not worded correctly. Next. Okay. Um, for Drake and or Tanoth, um, the prophecies of, here we go, uh, G-A-R-A-B-A-N-D-A-L, Garbendal, Spain, by our Blessed Virgin Mary, include the warning, which will be experienced everywhere and by everyone on earth and is meant to give mankind the chance to amend their lives, to correct the conscience of the world, and prepare us for the great miracle. The great miracle, Our Lady promised, will show God's manifestation of his love, will take place at the grove of nine pines, trees overlooking the village and the miracle will appear permanently in the grove of nine pines forever for the world to see the miracle will occur on thursday evening at 8 30 p.m on or between the 8th and the 16th of march april or may the miracle will then coincide with a rare and important event in the church and on the feast day of the martyr of the eucharist this has been calculated to be the spring of 2017 the sixth the sick present at the miracle will be cured and sinners converted and their incredulous will be leave. If the end times prophecies of the Bible have been canceled, have our Blessed Mother's Garbendal prophecies also been canceled as well? Did we have any assurance that that was actually made by any actual uh, genuine being or authority? I mean, it's all well and fine for somebody to come around with a holographic projector, make it "Quote unquote miracle," cow some uh, people who don't necessarily have the means to know better into believing them and say, "Oh, this is going to happen. This is going to happen." That doesn't necessarily mean it's actually going to happen. If it's something that can be faked, assume that it was, and that is something that can be very, very easily faked, even with existing technology that we parents have. And sure as heck, visitors to this planet had equivalent technology back then. So I have a real, um, I have a real issue with these claims and these prophecies because I can't guarantee that the source is what they claim they are. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go a step further. Take the religiosity out of it. Period. I don't care who you are, what you think, or how you believe. Do not uh, agree to an absolute that is written in any belief text. The reason being is that the bad guys wrote those things, and they're probably, if you look at them, contradictory. If the word itself, as written, is the perfection in manifestation, the making real of the, quote, God head uh, to be given to man, then there cannot be any contradiction in it. And yet, the Bible, the Koran, all these other belief texts, you'll find contradictions. Uh, and those contradictions are not small. So, bear that in mind. Um, I really <laughs> I really take issue with the idea that somebody will take somebody's heart and rip it out by playing games with it. That can be somebody that uh, promises you $10 million in the, in the mail. That can be somebody who promise you, promises you the fulfillment of a, quote, prophecy. And I've studied this particular one, and it does not have the validity that these people say it does. So go from there. Okay. Um, for our audience and our listeners, I just wanted to let them know that, once again, um, as it, last week, we have – questions kind of intermingled um we have questions that are pertinent to tanath and sunfire and then we have some questions that are like on financials and i am going to as i'm reading through the questions those that have to do with financials and those kinds of things um will be held for drake's sunday show so that while we have tanath and sunfire with us we can get uh, the types of questions that they can answer answered Okay, so it, it, it's not that Thank I'm Thank you, I appreciate that. Questions. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's not that I'm going to be disregarding anyone's questions. Your questions will be addressed, but they will be saved and reserved for the Sunday show if they're, they're, they're those kinds of topics, okay? Cool. Um, all right, uh, let's see. Can someone please explain to me how young children will be able to make a sound decision 
in regards to the information that will be presented to them on the transition. They have no clue what is going on in the present and what has been going on in the past. How can they possibly choose between 3 and 4D? Uh, you're just assuming that they don't have any clue. I mean, a lot of the current generation of kids um, are much more aware and in tune than people are giving them credit for. <laughs> um, I it's not going to be as, as hard as people are thinking. I'll vote for that. Okay. okay. I, um, I totally question. agree oh. with that. Okay, thank you, honey. Um, okay, next question. Um, um I would like for you to explain the Kilanta codes and the language and how we would learn it, or would it be necessary to learn it? I'm still not an expert on Kilanta. I know there, there's um, uh, one individual who keeps uh, mailing me the stuff. It's not really my bag. It, I'm not getting a I'm not getting a ping back off of it. I'm sorry. I don't know anything about it. I'm just plain not going to say. I've heard rumors, and I'm not going to get any further than that. Okay. Um, All right. Let's see. Next question is, um, um, I think, okay, I think you are wrong on a few things. Like in the past show, you said that the Anukais are neutral. That is a convenient position for those in the Andromeda Council who voted to let them in. Isn't that true? Uh, The Andromeda Council, as far as I know, never voted to let the Anunnaki in. Um, The Anunnaki are not uh, dyed-in-the-wool evil. They are, at worst, opportunists, kind of like a yeast infection. Um, (laughs) They came in without the uh, invitation or consent of anyone proceeded to have their fun and then when uh, things got too hard, packed up and left with a a shaked fist saying you'll be back and then now are not capable of being back there might be some fragments but as a society they're no longer capable of, of sort of mass revenge or anything like that Okay. Um, I don't know if this question was answered the last time or not, but and is there a 4D version of my vehicle? Will, will it be waiting for me? <laughs> I have no clue. Don't worry. It's going to be we'll taken around. care of. We'll yeah. get around no matter. We'll have <laughs> okay. Um, I wouldn't actually, fixate on individual things. It's not healthy for you mentally anyway. One good fire and it's all over anyway. So, you know, stuff really, it all it does is make your life more comfortable. Yeah, exactly. Okay, um, we'll have different things to make us comfortable. So after the transition, will we, will we have the opportunity to choose the age of the appearance of our body or will it just stay the same in age appearance but will be healthier? Um, okay, a, f- a few things on, on appearance, and this is a good subject because I also got an email from somebody asking about appearance. Um, I think you will, will, by default, appear to be mid-20s to 30s, though you can, if you were older than that, you can make yourself look older if that's your choice. Uh, you're not going to be able to pick and choose parts. You'll be able to look like what you looked like in the past or look like an idealized version of yourself, but you're not going to be able to go through, like, uh, say, a list of celebrities and say, I want, uh, I want um, you know, this guy's crooked teeth and that guy's nose and this one's eyebrows and her flowing hair and all of that. It's, it's, uh, it's not going to be a pick-and-choose grab bag. Um. Okay, so Jennifer Aniston's out for me. Okay. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston is too busy looking like Jennifer Aniston, you know. Look like yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. I, w- I would settle for myself at 20. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that would be fine by me. Okay, next question, really a comment. The term law of attraction is actually the name used for the process of manifesting desires into being just for clarification, correct? Pretty much. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yes, it's it's the principle. 
and I'd say it's more a principle than a law, unless you think of it sort of like it's gravity. But uh, yeah, the pr- the principle is basically that whatever you're uh, putting all your energy into, that's that's what you're going to get. Okay. Um, as a naturopath, I've given recommendations for echinacea or enchantia to my clients for over 25 years. You are recommending echinacea for sleep, and I have never heard of this as a use for echinacea. Um, uh, uh, that's just another comment, Drake. Well, I heard of it for uh, immune system bolstering and as a general adaptogen, but I've never heard of it for sleep either. So, Well, what it does, it's like, it's like St. John's Award. It takes away the anxieties. It allows your mind to be peaceful. Simple things okay. that uh, are conducive to sleep. Yeah, that's so where while it the doesn't actually reputation. Induce, right, it doesn't actually induce sleep. It 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 does. It works on the other things that might cause you to be sleepless. <laughs> exactly. Okay, gotcha. Also okay. known as purple cone flower. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. This one grown says, wild uh, all I over. Get, I used it for immune-related disorders for cold, flu, fevers, and infections, and it is a great anti-inflammatory. I called many of my naturopath friends. Yeah, uh, I have uh, called many of my naturopath friends, and no one has heard of it as being used for sleep either. I checked several websites. Uh, so anyway, that that was just a comment. All right, next question is, um, uh, let's see, question for Sunfire. Uh, Tanat said that you are knowledgeable of our origins. I would like to know of the origin Mar- original Mars colony. Are there are wait are they the true source of the original Terran or human beings, possibly referred to as the I N or A Y A N? Is this true at all? It was said to have happened 9,500 years before Christ, when Vela Supernova destroyed it. Also, has any other more local planets besides what Tolek has described as our closest relatives had any hand in our species development like maybe Venus? Any true original tale of us will suffice that you can share. There is um, between 22 and 25 different races involved in the genetic engineering of what we know as the modern Terran, generally speaking, between three to seven different genetic, you know, um, between three to seven, each individual has generally a higher concentration of between three to seven of those 22 to 25. As far as the Mars colony being the origins of the Aryans, um, I don't think that's the case. It's not from what I remember anyway. Um, I believe they were a combination of Syrian and Wyron um, genetics from what I remember. Okay. So I hope that right. helps. Yes, I also don't yes, think that yes. the Venusians had any significant impact into our uh into the development of the Terran species. Right, yeah. Okay. Um all right, let's see. Um I know you've addressed this issue before, but I feel it is critical to understanding for my family. Did I hear you correct in saying that many on Earth will be unable to ascend because they have reptilian blood or cannot deal with their own emotional issues? Or am I to understand that at this point that will not interfere and if you have a heartbeat and you are here on Earth that you will get to ascend? Please clarify. Thank you. If you have a heartbeat, if you're here on Earth, if you haven't decided to pack up and go somewhere else, you're going to ascend. It has nothing to do with the percentage of reptilian blood. It has nothing to do with... uh, you know, your attitudes and thoughts and feelings and all of that, or your emotional state, those things, uh, well, reptilian DNA you can't help. But your attitudes, your emotions, your thoughts, all of the things that you've gone through in your life, it helps if you do the self-work to deal with them. Not because it's going to be a deciding factor in whether or not you ascend, because you're going to ascend if you're here. But in for the straight out reason that it's going to be a heck of a lot less shocking and traumatic for you. Right. 
Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Perfect sense. Perfect sense. Okay. Um, all right. I'm con- confused about something. If reptilians will become uncomfortable here after a certain point, you mentioned that they might feel as if if they have burrs in their butts. Why? <laughs> Why were they not uncomfortable in the Procyon system with their little gray buddies when they took it over? I believe that the home planet Kyena is is at the least a 4D positive planet. What's the scoop? There was a long, long process of... Uh, they didn't come in guns blazing, we'll put it that way. If you look at the stuff that uh, Kyla has left in the public re- record here... Um, he talks about a slow infiltration and slow change, not taking place over a couple hundred years, but taking place over thousands of years, a slow, steady, deliberate infiltration that proceeded in steps. So even though um, the Procyon home planet and home system was vibrating at a fourth dimensional positive, it was able to be undermined slowly. Okay. Also, the information that you had given about the Procyon system is awesome, especially about Kyla. What are some of the specific practical jokes, if you can share any, or funny things that he's done while interacting with y'all? Oh, dear. Oh, I chased, I chased Morai, his, uh, his partner, around a spaceship uh, for hours trying to... Uh, get him to do something that he was supposed to do. Now, he's able to teleport, so this was very interesting. Um, I'm sure Sunfire has some anecdotes. <laughs> I'm like, do it with a straight face. <laughs> oh, there's, there's been, you know, the, the one thing about the Procyons, especially Kyla, is there is no end to their imagination. I mean, he's 15 feet tall, so you can imagine there's all that imagination and creativity, and the Procyons, you know, they they just, they're really something else. Um, I think, honestly, the ones I can remember right now are not something that I can share with the public, especially on a PG radio show like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he's a naughty boy. Okay. <laughs> All they're right. very Let's... naughty boys. In fact, they're notorious <laughs> for that. Okay. Um, I woke up with such a feeling of excitement that I had to go outside to listen for church bells. It is uh, it is Sunday here, uh, but there were no bells that I could hear. I guess I'm just hearing them in my head. Do uh, uh, Tanath and Sunfire agree that uh, when we reach... Uh, a point of freedom or nearing ascension, will will bells ring out throughout the planet? I've never heard of uh, bells being a part of it. That, that's an interesting thing. I look forward to seeing what happens. Okay. That was my thing. Yeah, the Drake bell. said he was, he was going to have the church bells ring all, all around the world. I've contacted just about everybody that's got a church bell, and uh, when um, the United States sets itself free, uh, everybody's going to hear church bells. If I can, if I got anything to say about it, okay? Okay, cool. Okay, uh, is that's it a true cool about? Idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, my pronunciation is terrible. You have to forgive me, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, uh, Drake, is it true about the nerve pinch from the Tau Sapiens that? The Russian Spetsnaz used and was used by Spock, who looks like a Tau Sapien in Star Trek. Oh, you're talking about the uh, the quote unquote Vulcan nerve pinch. Uh-huh. Yeah, they got something like that. <laughs> There's it a is pronounced Tau Sapien. Yeah, Tau Sapien. Okay. And yeah. I did look I did look into that and research it. And uh, if you do that particular thing with a specific type of uh, chi being put out, it works just like Spock did it. Okay? Okay. All right. After listening to the talk with you and Tanath and Sunfire last week and hearing that the food we eat will become energy and there will be no more urination and defecation as we know it, ascension became more real and a lot of questions have come to mind. 
What happens to the organs that support urination and defecation? The kidneys, the liver, the pancreas, the intestines. Will they become vestigial? Vestigial? Yeah, they become vestigial. Okay. And that also means that if you if you ever have to go back into uh, a physical dimension, they'll still work. But yeah, they're largely okay. vestigial at that level. Okay. Not only can I not pronounce, I cannot talk sometimes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, That's okay. I have a I have a case of something called dyslalia. Um, that means that it's part of the whole uh, cluster of stuff that's that's included under the label of dyslexia. Um, that means that sometimes I have a decidedly difficult time speaking. I was an English major, but, you know, it's just when I have information overload, sometimes I get this, you know, like brain-mouth disconnect. I don't know what the deal is. Sorry about that, gang. Okay. Um, and if there is, is no more urine or feces, how is it that we are connected to the earth since our bodily products would no longer feed it in an amazing cycle that supports life and growth the way we know it? It just becomes something that we look at but are not really a part of? No, you're still a part of, uh, you're still a part of the planet. The uh, relationship becomes a lot more personal at that point. Um, it becomes a matter of energy as opposed to uh, a physical uh, physical waste. Okay. Every living thing is intimately connected with their planet of origin. Okay, and, um, and you know, in, in the cases of, say, for instance, like there is a there is a mutual reciprocal relationship between people and their planet. In the Tausetians' case, all of the Tausetian planets produce a certain kind of crystal, which the planet will give to them to use, and that helps them maintain. Uh, these crystals form the basis of their star drives, and that helps them maintain the intimate connection with their planet, even when they're in space. Okay. Um, okay. Has anyone ever told you, Tanath, uh, that your voice and the way you talk, you sound just like Dharma, Jenna Elf- Elfman from the old TV show Dharma and Greg? No, I, I'd never heard that. I do get told that I have a nice voice, and I've worked I've worked on telephones and whatnot before, so I've never been told that I sound like Dharma. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right, I've had uh, further... all kinds of people email me with their guesses as to which YouTube star I am. I'm I'm sorry, I'm not any YouTube stars. <laughs> okay, and uh, back to the person who was asking the biological questions. Um, would animals also no longer provide manure or urine? Now, uh, now cow pat, no cow patties, no horse manure, no fish poop that feed the smaller fish and plant life. What will happen to the cycle of life? And what happens to the, say, the smell of a barn? Will there be none? <laughs> um, as far as I know, life continues without requiring poop. Yeah. Okay. It's it basically like with. You know, like she said, with you know the 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 um, humans or humanoids or Chalcedians, for example, it is the same thing with animals and plants. The cycle of life continues; it just continues in a different way. Okay, so then the next question is: Will babies be born in the same way through sex, and will they be delivered in the same way through a mother's body? Will babies no longer need diapers? Then will there even be babies? <laughs> There will be babies. Uh, okay, yeah, there's there'll a be lot of different ways to reproduce. Tolik has spoken about uh, deliberately manifesting children, and this is uh, one method that many people choose to use, and it isn't restricted just to man and woman either. Um, small groups and same-sex uh, partnerships can deliberately manifest children. A lot of us prefer the old-fashioned way, which is um, pregnancy, gestation, um, carrying and delivering, although it's not strictly required. And a lot of us, of course, prefer the old-fashioned way of uh, conceiving children. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a lot well, of fun. The, okay. Uh, these are very interesting questions. They, they, you know, um, Will there then be genitalia and sex, and will we still live in the same way that you know, like uh, people are afraid to be naked or in front of one another or... <laughs> um, nudity taboos vary widely by culture, but a lot of people really just don't care. 
um, clothing is one of these things that people like because, hey, it's fun, not because, oh, my God, I'm going to turn to stone if I see somebody naked, or, right? <laughs> or I'm going right. to turn to people to stone if they see me naked, right? I've so always a lot thought of clothing is same... keeping me warm or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's it's either functional or it's for decoration. It's not necessarily to cover nudity. Yes, genitalia still exist. Um, people really don't uh, fetishize it quite to the same extent that we do here. You know, think okay. of some of the societies on Earth that don't fetishize women's exposed breasts. It's kind of the same thing. Uh, when it comes to things like sex, it definitely does go on <laughs> quite a bit. And I actually asked uh, an Androni friend, I asked him flat out, do um, do fluids still exist? And he assured me that they do, and they do because they're fun and <laughs> people like them. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, 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 um, it, and that stuff exists. It doesn't stop at, like, the next two dimensions, it exists well past, like, the thousands of dimensions. It yeah, you, as far as I know, you never turn into a fuzzy, sexless ball of light. Unless, unless that's it. what you do. Like, unless that's what you want. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what will happen to our down-to-earth, quote, expressions, like horse hockey, stepping in it? Does it all become antiquated expression from a time when life was earthy? What about talking dirty? <laughs> Uh, I think still goes still on. Yeah. <laughs> those will definitely still continue. I, I, I know. I can tell. I can see it coming. Those are still going to continue. i yeah. I, you know, I've never met an Androni who can't swear like a sailor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And I've even heard. Uh, I've even heard my brothers and Admiral Mander um, use scatological <laughs> references. I've heard my brother and my brother and those that um are my crewmates too, they've used they've used um they've used swear words, they've used Terran terms, um and I mean it it was honestly it was a shock the first time I heard my brother say the the BS word. The first time I heard it out of his mouth, it was like, What did you just say? And then it just became really funny after that. And now it's like they, you know, this this interaction between the dimensionals and the ETs and us, it's, it's a two-way mentoring street. It's a two-way learning thing. They're learning from us as much as we're learning from them. Yeah, and, and they do know what... Um, they do know what uh, feces and urine are. Uh, okay. Just because they don't produce it doesn't mean they don't know what it is. Doesn't mean they don't know what it is, right? Okay. I would like to hear Drake's comments about the Zetas from Zeta Talk. I have read and followed their website for years, and the most part, and for the most part, the Zetas seem to be the, of the positive. Neither lighter or is the contactee, or she seems like a very nice lady. I know Tanash. T A N N A C H. Sorry. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be Tanoth and Sunfire, and uh, say that they are. There are many positive ETs or angels working on our behalf. Would that include the Zetas? Uh, I would say so. Um, we are discovering uh, groups that we did not know were basically here. Uh, that have been working at this for a while. Uh, some newer, some older, some have been here for a long time, uh, some are brand new. Uh, those discoveries are always a joy. Uh, you find that you've got um, people who are willing to assist with all of the uh, things we need to do, uh, help us in uh, terms of their perspective and understanding being slightly different enough that when you add two and two together, you might get five. Ooh, that's cool, man. Uh, let's try that. And off and down the road you go. Uh, there's a combination of things that, that are really uh, complementary uh, in all of it. The Zetas are, uh, as far as I can tell, positives, and uh, they seem to have their information straight. Okay? What, are you talking about the Zeta reticulants? 
uh, is that didn't beta get it for or beta. Ah. Because um, our our direct experience with the zeta reticulans is that they're kind of flaky. Well, I they're didn't. That, so am I. Yeah, but you. <laughs> you're not I mean, uh, you know, it. What I, what I'm saying is that uh, yeah, you. Uh, uh, I'm not going to say that everybody is right on in everything that they do. Because it, it, nobody is um, getting the higher. Supposedly, the higher you go, the more you understand, the better you get. In other words, the closer you get to um, the absolute truths of how things are, uh, what your role in it is, uh, what you can can and and or should do about certain things, if anything at all. And so, you know, um, how does a kid learn to walk by falling down? So, you know, I, I overlook the, you know, um, personality differences and, and uh, ring around the rosies uh, just on a personal basis because I'm probably guilty somewhere and I don't need that to come out. So that's, you know, and I don't think, I haven't found anything wrong with the Zetas, okay? Okay, good. All right, next question. Um, and then we're uh, um, we're about ten, almost fifteen minutes late taking a quick break. But I'm going to ask one more question um, or two, and then we'll take a one song break. Okay, gang. Um, all okay. right. Let's see. Um, um, what about? Okay. Wait a minute. Let me open the window again. Um, what about uh, sex when in four uh, D existence? Will will it be more or less intense? Well, usually uh, at that point, most people have some kind of psionic or empathic uh, ability. So if you're if you're a telepath or an empath, let's just say it gets better and better. Um, also, unless it is your intent to feel pain or cause pain, I know for a lot of women and some men on this planet right now, sex is a painful proposition. It doesn't need to be that way. Um, and a lot of the dysfunctions that uh, Terrans can suffer in the realm of sex and sexuality, they're also not going to stick around. So, um, you know, if, if you're a sufferer of one of the many, many sexual dysfunctions that afflict humanity on this planet, you don't need to worry or feel ashamed. That's going so to we're get not going to have naturally. a need for Viagra then. Men will still get erections and <laughs> Oh, yeah, I know a lot of really old guys who are well able to keep it up. I mean, I'm talking, you know, people who are thousands of years old. Mm-hmm. Ooh, You're not going to need to worry about good. <laughs> I thought that would, that, that, would, uh, that would create Drake to say something there. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Uh, on that uh, note... <laughs> Let's uh, let's take a one song break. What do you say, gang? And get a get a beverage and wet our whistle, and we'll be right back. We'll just take a real quick break. I'm down for some cream of black bean soup. <laughs> there you go. Okay, this next also song was also. Coffee. <laughs> okay, this next song was also requested uh, prior to the show by Sunfire this evening, and um, this is called "It Can't Rain All the Time" by Jane Syberry. We'll be back in about five minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, we are back. And um, let me see if I've got Drake with me. Drake, is that you? Hello, Drake? Nope, apparently not. Okay, we don't we don't have Drake back yet, but we do have... Can you hear us? Uh, yeah, we have Drake and us in Sunfire. You had him muted. Huh? Drake, speak up. Yes. Oh, okay. Drake's with you. Okay, so we're, I've got all of you on the same line. Cool. Yeah. That's, it's going to get interesting, I guess. Yeah. Uh, um, I I can hear I can hear my voice back at me a little bit. So if you've got your computer volume up, if you can turn it down just a little bit. Then okay. we'll be able to hear it. Uh, then you won't be able to hear it. <laughs> well, okay. Well, we'll we'll give it our best shot here. All right. Let me scroll back up to the top where we were at because I've been. The questions are coming in faster than we can get them answered, gang. 
Okay. Let's see. Um, I listened to a TOLAC interview posted on June 1st. As far as what he says, this planet will be turning into 4D in this coming January, and any persons not wanting to become 4D will have an option to travel to another planet. Uh, now, I have not followed TOLEC, but I listen to things that Tanath has been saying, and my question is, why are we worrying about it? I don't know why we're worrying about it. We're worrying about it because it's new to people, and uh, people have a lot of anxiety of things that they don't, um, that they're not fully familiar with, and that are completely outside the paradigm that they're used to. That's why people are worried about it. I'm not particularly worried about it. These things have a habit of taking care of themselves. Everything's going to be all right. Everything will work out. That doesn't absolve me of the uh, necessity to do my work by any means, uh, nor does it absolve anyone else of attempting to do the self-work in order to uh, you know, make this easier on themselves. Yeah. But, I think uh, the yeah, question... it's, it's going to work. Things are going to be yeah, all right. I think the biggest question to not that people have is they're, they keep asking, why are we worried about bringing down the cabal? They think that the ascension is going to correct all of that. And so why are we even concerned with bringing the cabal down? Is, the, is, the ascension is not going to correct all that. That's kind of more of a pacif- uh, pacifistic attitude or approach in that, you well, know, pacifistic, just, passive. Or, <laughs> passive, yeah. And, I mean, there is a necessity to remove that element from the equation and make sure that to the best of everybody's ability that people are educated and prepared and know what they're, you know, know as well as they can what they're, you know, what they're going into. The ascension is not going to take care of the cabal. If the cabal are still here when ascension happens, they're going to ascend right along with everybody else. It's so going to be a lot harder for them we'll to follow. operate in the open. Um, but I think even the um, even the fourth dimension can suffer from infiltration. We've just recently discussed the uh, example of Kyla and the pro- people of Procyon and the planet of Cana, which was systematically infiltrated and uh, co-opted against the inhabitants will and in a lar- large uh in a large way against their knowledge and consent um getting rid of the cabal is one of these things that we should do because we don't want to permit the opportunity for that kind of continued systematic subjugation to take place at any level it'll be harder for them to pull their bag of tricks but um, that doesn't mean that the opportunity is completely gone for them to make life miserable for us. So we would really like to do our best to see that they're not in a position to do that to anyone ever again. Okay, makes perfect sense. All right, I'm curious about an uncontacted indigenous tribes in places like the Amazon. What do you think about how we go about helping them with humanitarian projects if they are hostile to outside presences, how will we go about informing them about their choices to transition with us or to be relocated to a 3D planet? Don't worry, that will be taken care of. Um, We do have ways to visit those people without getting shot at. Or, well, whether that's by a bow or something else, right? Um, Yes, we do. It's not as impossible as, as people think. And just because they're uncontacted by uh, other mainstream uh, Western Terran civilizations doesn't mean that they're completely uncontacted. Okay. What is your take on organizing? Oh, go ahead. ahead. Most likely, as far as those, um, what will be done is whoever their uh, genetic progenitors are um, will be making the contact as much as that's possible, and it'll provide for um, probably a less impacting situation because they'll look very similar to those people. And they'll speak the language? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Um, what is your lady's take on Organite 
And does a small Organite device really work, or does size matter when it comes to Organite? I know Organite works. I'm not an expert in its use. I don't know if, if size matters or not. I do know that um, Organite is incredibly useful and does a lot of great things. And gifting is a totally awesome thing. Gifting being the um, the process of putting pieces of Organite um, on or around or near things that are designed to cause harm so that they then start to cause help instead. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we could probably study that. We can Google it and find out if, if you know, like if they found... There's other there's people who are way more expert in that than I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, if the movement of our planet in space causes us to ascend from 3D to 4D, then how have other beings ascended without this type of event? A lot of times it's, it's on a personal, individual level. Um, occasionally, entire planets will ascend. Then they usually, um, well, there is a... Uh, a recycling that goes on on the surface, meaning that um, sentient inhabitants and animals are usually taken off. The planet recycles its surface, and then they come back, and they can resettle if they've also, you know, if they're the right vibration. Mm -hmm. uh, anything that does not get taken off is pretty much um, recycled along with it. But it is oh. not very frequently that an entire planet uh, changes vibration like this, and it is not very frequently that an entire population undergoes this at the same time simultaneously with the planet. Right. Okay. Our, as far as I've heard, it's actually the first time in the universe's history. That's what they say, anyway. Okay. Laughing out loud, are we on Earth the real dummies of the universe? No. That kind of implies that um, it implies that you're stupid. You're not stupid. You're the people of this planet are very intelligent and capable of a lot more than they realize. We're not dummies. We've been lied to and tricked and oppressed and suppressed. That does not make us dummies. Okay. I get kind of upset at. Um, people, and I'll call them people even if they might not be from this planet, but people who suggest that uh, Terrans are stupid because this has happened to us. No, it's not the case. I've got a great deal of sympathy, and after having lived my entire human lifespan on this planet, going through the same thing that everybody else is going through, and seeing the same things everybody else is seeing, and subject to the same um, traumas and indoctrinations and programmings that everybody else is, I cannot ever agree with the uh, with the stance that we brought this on ourselves or we did this to ourselves. It's just not possible. Okay. Next question is, is there a way for ET incarnates to find out for sure what their planet of origin is? Um, I've got a personal policy when it comes to telling people what they are. I don't do it. Why? I could be wrong. Um, I could be mistaken. I could be seeing only part of it. And if I tell you this and you fixate on this, I limit your personal growth. So I won't do it. It's unethical. Mm -hmm. um, what I recommend is just finding meditation techniques that work for you as an individual and go deep within yourself and without anybody else influencing you in any direction, any way, telling you how to do it, what to say, what to think, what to ask. And ask your, ask your inner self, your inner voice, and find out for yourself, deep within yourself, what your planetary origins are and who you are and what you know anything else you want to learn about yourself it's the most 
purest form of what you can learn about yourself comes from within. Exactly. It's It's got to come from inside you. If somebody else tells you, oh, you're Pleiadian, well, that may be true, it may not, but they've automatically tried to define you and limit you by doing that. Okay. Besides, there's more good guys than the Pleiadians out there, so... And that seems to be what, exactly, and that seems to be everybody's default. Oh, you're from off world. You're Pleiadian. No. And okay. you know, one of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten from Drake, and I hold on to it and remind myself every single day: accept no limitations. Exactly. Accept no right. limitations and accept no imitations either. Yeah. Right. Is Drake still with us? You there, Drake? Oh yeah, I'm here. I'm just listening. Okay, good. Okay. What All I right. what I, let's, let's put it this way: I had taught some of this stuff, uh, specifically using the uh, movie The Matrix. It is up to the capability of an individual to get their head around the possibility that there's something more to all this than what is realized. You may not be able to taste, it, smell, and whatever with it, but then again, you just might. Until such time as you absolutely are assured by experiential uh, ways that there is uh, a difference between imagination and higher realities, uh, everybody's kind of going, wow, man, I'm not sure. And that's fine. Just be sure of one thing. There is a not just possibility but probability that there are no limitations and that the limitations have been set by someone other than you thereby taking away your freedom of uh, your own imagination, your own capability of perception, and the fact that you are much more than what you know you are at this point. We all do to take that um, giant leap uh, for mankind here shortly, and all I'm trying to do is uh, get you get you ready for the escalator. Uh, gotcha. Okay. 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 Um, okay, next question is for Tanas. On the Truth Frequency radio show, you stated that souls who incarnated here from higher dimensions will go back to their original dimension when they trans- when the transition happens. Does this mean that their mission here will be completed and that they won't live out their lives here on Earth? And does this mean that well, after the transition there will no longer be any ET incarnates on Earth, only 4D Terrans? Not necessarily. You see, there's a lot of work to be done healing this uh, healing this planet. So while they'll have the option to return to their home territory, so to speak, they'll also have the option to stay and help. I um, I intend on sticking around at least a little while until you know Earth has a stable defense force that it can use to protect itself from ex- from external threats. For instance, the Silver Legion is going to stay around for a bit, even though um, we do have other places to go and this isn't our home. Um, I know a lot of Fey incarnates, their real work is going to begin after, when they're going to start with the help, helping with the healing of the earth and um, recovering all, all, the, all, the, all the damage done to nature. You know, so it really depends on the individual mission. Some people came here and came activated for the lead up time. Other people came here and will get their real activation afterwards, and that's when the real party begins for them. Okay. All right. Um, a few questions for you, Sunfire. Uh, on the last show, you said the Octarians were one of the taller human races. Could you describe how they look in a little bit more detail, their skin, hair, eye color, etc.? Um, Actually, that's probably something I wouldn't be able to do. I mean, they look human. They're, I mean, they're a human race. They look human. And, I mean, if you take the average Terran and just stretch them to be a little bit more taller and a little, on, um, you know, the more, like, I guess, the more thinner side, then, you know, it's probably about what you're going to get. Okay. Um, have you had any interactions with them? And if so, what are they like? And what dimension um, are they from? 
Is there fourth, fifth, sixth dimension? Um, I've had interactions and have a couple personal friends of mine that are Arcturian incarnates. Um, so, I mean, as far as interaction with them on, on a physical level, it's been incarnate. Um, on a dimensional level, my higher self has quite a few friends that are Arcturian. Um, they work very closely with us and are part of the Federation. And being a Federation diplomat, I tend to interact with them quite often up there. Okay. And they're very yeah. nice, very pleasant. Okay, um, a question. Um, okay, um, Tanoth and Sunfire, what are your respective Earth ages? Oh, don't you know it's rude to ask a lady her age? <laughs> That's generally not considered polite on this planet. Um, I'm in my 30s. You're in your 30s, Tanoth? Okay, yeah. what about you, Sun, Sunfire, also? or? Yeah. Okay, you're both in your 30s. Okay, well, then I wouldn't be worried about them asking your age. (laughs) When you get to be an old hag. I was just making a joke out of it. (laughs) It's when you get to be an old hag like me (laughs) that you resent that. Okay. Um, Oh, sense, Denise. You are not a hag. You are not old either. Good Lord, we're all just children by uh, the standards of (laughs) most (laughs) off-worlders. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Um, I'm, I'm the old bar, I'm the old part here. I'm the old part here. I'm even older than Jamie J. So there. <laughs> okay. And, and again, it's a number. <laughs> so anyway, all right. Um, Tanoth said that Hollow Earth residents have been evicted from the planet due to a request by Mother Earth. Uh, and why? In detail, please. I thought that they were good people. How were they evicted, and where did they go? Well, it turns out that they had something to do with um, uh, keeping the status quo status quo. So um, they were kind of kicked out on the basis of that. Um, Gaia is really, really not happy about anyone trying to clip her wings. And she's letting them know in no uncertain terms. Now, they were evacuated somewhere else. I uh, don't like them enough to really keep tabs on where and why. Tell her, um, can, I, I don't know if you can, but share about um, what Gaia said when when um, one of our diplomats asked what her opinion was. I don't remember the words. I thought basically what it was is it was one of the ones that were protesting the loudest and she dumped a boulder on their head. Oh, right, that. One of the ones who was protesting against it and she just, yeah, I remember that one. That wasn't words, yeah. Um one of the uh, the people there was stridently objecting to um, this measure, and well, a part of the cavern um, fell down and crushed his head, followed by a small earthquake. So, I mean, she made her opinion quite firmly known. Yeah, wasn't it that our diplomat said, "Well, let's see what Guy's opinion is on this," and then the boulder fell. Yep. Yeah. Okay, um, they're, they're getting personal, ladies. They're getting personal here. Um, uh, question Watch. for both girls. <laughs> question for both girls. Could you describe yourselves a little, your age, your looks, your height maybe? I'd prefer not to. Um, for one thing, I don't exactly fit into what most uh, North Americans or Westerners would consider to be the beauty ideal. My body's the wrong shape, and I don't really give much care to uh, to vanity. Um, so I don't, I don't. You know, all of these people who are trying to cook up some fantasies about me, I'm sorry, I, I'm really not all that fantastic. Sorry. <laughs> Is a diplomat? I have to say that's classified. <laughs> okay. It's classified information right now. Okay. I think they're trying to figure out what what um, incarnates, you know, would would look like. Okay, you know, like they they. I look like everyone them. else. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, if there are blockages in one's spine, will that prevent the Kundalini from rising or ascension? And will it dramatically increase the heartbeat while it's happening? Is there anything in our physicality that can prevent ascension? No. No. Okay. 
Um, so, and there won't be a dramatic increase in your heartbeat or anything if you have a blockage in your spine, right? No. I have no idea about the heartbeat, but I like it's not going to stop you from ascending. Okay. Also, I keep hearing singing choirs when I awaken in the morning. Is that anything that has to do with ascension? It's no, you just need to get you need to get better space between you and church. <laughs> that or it's your uh, guardians waking you up. You know, they they figure you probably like to hear singing when you when you're waking up, and so your guardians are like, "Hey, let's sing our you know let's sing our song and and greet them as they wake up every morning." Okay. Uh, for a question for Drake, just wondering if you can report anything in reference. Oh, no, never mind. That's another. That's a financial question. Um, my husband has had health hit issues with his stomach since before he was 19 years old. Will people with these long-standing problems that had them at an early age go and they go back to their 20s or, or 30s, uh, will they still have no health issues? Or if they had them when they were young, will they have the same health issues? You'll be a physically ideal version of yourself. Okay meaning that you won't have any of those long-term health health issues. If you've right, been, so you know, a colitis sufferer since your childhood, you won't be a colitis sufferer anymore. You know, things like that. Okay, good. good. Okay. And I, if he, um, I was just going to recommend it. I know um, Taf, Tanaf is more of an expert on this, but if he's having long-standing stomach issues, I would suggest looking into a gluten-free diet. Yeah, your doctors about that. IBS is gluten intolerance in many cases, or you know other intolerances. You know, um, try eliminating things like gluten, uh, grain products. If you're having a lot of trouble, you can try eliminating dairy and egg, and see how that helps. Eliminate McDonald's. Yeah, I really don't recommend that. Uh, eating right. that. Yeah, I mean, get rid of the corn syrup. Right, people here are, are concerned with red meat, you know, and they're, and they're trying to go vegan and vegetarian when in actuality um, human beings are omnivores, you know, and I mean we're both meat and vegetable eating creatures, um, uh, but, but we were never meant to be fried food eaters and, <laughs> you know. Um, or uh, processed uh, seed oil eaters. Yeah, exactly. Um and um you know, uh we're we're not we're not chem you know, like eating a chemical diet. It, but neither are our pets or anything, you know? I mean, if if you know, people should notice that if they feed their dogs cheap crap dog food that's got all GMO processed corn and this that and the other thing in it and they feed it to their animals and they wonder then well, gee whiz, you know, how come when I feed Fluffy, um, you know, cheap crap dog food, he, his hair falls out and my dog, you know, gets cataracts and he can't see anymore? Well, it's kind of the same thing, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah and, human... you know, people wonder now why their dogs and stuff are getting fat. It's not because they're feeding them too much. It's not because they're not getting enough exercise. It's because they're eating wheat and exactly. other toxins. You know, don't feed your dog corn, don't feed your dog soy, don't feed your dog wheat. Really? You know, if yep. you have to cook them a dinner to get them a good food, well, that's better than feeding them the stuff that comes out of uh, out of a bag and is labeled balanced. It's like these nuts over in the 6 to 10 servings a day place decided, oh, well, we'll say whole grains are good to, good for you, and then we'll feed them to everything, and you know, they don't really care if uh, if your cat dies or your dog dies or the misery that brings you. You know, feed they're obligate carnivores. Feed them what carnivores need to eat. That's yep, meat. Yep. Really? Okay. Um, A little bit of vegetable roughage, not more than about 10% of the diet. Okay. Next question. Will those who stay in 3D have an even tougher time fighting off the Dracos? No. Because, uh, well, we plan on reducing the Draco population significantly enough. That won't be a factor, for one. For another, they're going to a planet that will be protected. You know, there's there's not going to be any more sleeping on the job. Okay. And right. as far as uh, I understand it, it's been an area that is deep within the, um, what they call the, uh, 
no, uh, what is it, the, what, what is the term they call it, the neutral zone, where there's, like, no, you know, where it's really protected and there isn't, like, a huge exposure to, um, to, like, wars and battles and, you know, incursions and that sort of thing. Right. Okay. Um, um, here's another question that we've answered many different ways, many different times, but um, uh, let's see. Um, Drake is saying that some things are going to disappear. What about our homes? Uh, my home is part brick and part vinyl siding. Will the vinyl siding and gutters suddenly just be gone? Honestly, like I, I don't know what's going to persist and what's not going to persist. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You're going to have what you need. Right. That, that's what I'm it's trying not, to It's get not worth getting scared people. over. Right. Uh, our needs are going to be met, you know, and, and yeah. you know, you're going to find that if if your if your vinyl rain gutters do fall off, that maybe you won't have the rain that you used to have and you won't have a need for vinyl rain gutters anyway. <laughs> you know, whatever. Or, like, or you know, the else. climate of this planet is changing, too, so uh, that's, what is appropriate for your climate situation now might not be appropriate for your climate situation then. A lot's going to have to be redone anyway. So, right. um, you yeah, know, a lot. I think a lot case. of this talk underlying was, it is, I think, the fear of of the losing unknown. stuff. Yeah, yeah, and of losing stuff. Don't get attached to it. Like anybody who's ever had a house fire knows, one good fire and it's all gone anyway. So don't get attached to stuff. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Look at all these places that are experiencing flooding. And the hur- yeah, the hurricanes, the tornadoes. The things that really, really matter, you'll still have them. The things right. that don't matter, you won't need them and you won't want them. Yeah, concern yourself with and yourself. Then, your and then when you get to 4D, and... you can manifest anything, you know, instantly. Yeah, you can learn how to manifest your own. So if you really wanted vinyl siding, you could have vinyl siding. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you all listen to Carrie Cassidy, Cassidy's interview with Aaron Green Hicks, uh, uh, a.k.a. Aaron Rothschild? And if so, can you speak a little about the validity or accuracy of the information that is presented by Carrie Cassidy uh, regarding parallel universes or dimensions and the struggle between good and evil and what is going to happen in the future. She said that she knows, but she can't say because the people of the planet aren't ready to hear it. That sounds ominous to me. Mm. That does sound pretty ominous. Uh, I would have to say I'm, I'm not too concerned. I'm not familiar with the material. So I really can't weigh, weigh in on it. But um, I do know a few things about alternate uh, timelines and alternate realities and parallel universes. And i got to say that, you know, honestly, uh, we don't need to worry. Yeah. Okay. The thing is that uh, Cassidy listens to a lot of fear porn, okay? Yeah. Yeah, she's pretty up on the fear porn. Yeah, as are, as are a number of other people. Okay. All right. Um, you have previously mentioned that the planet Andron is an all-gay planet. Its star is Antares, uh, which is enormous in size compared to our sun. Our sun would be about the size of a pinhead compared to Antares. I'm, I'm oh, curious yeah, Antares to know, is a red giant. Yeah, I, I'm curious to know how large Andron is compared to Terra and what the approximate population of Andron will be. Do the male and female... Andron's got about 500,000, or sorry, 500 million people. Just about the same as most of us. Yeah, okay, and then the other question was, and do male and females live interminglingly in communities on um, Andron? No, a funny thing happens with Androni uh, communities. They do live in mixed communities, and they get along pretty good for all that they might not uh, might not want to be um, taking each other home from the nightclub. Um, the f- women run civil society almost entirely, and the men run the military almost entirely. Okay. So it's, 
you know, they, they, they definitely have their separate spheres, and they like it that way. There is opportunity for crossover for those who are inclined. Okay. Um, I've heard... As for okay. how large the planet is, the planet is large enough that it has three times the gravity of Earth. So they tend to be uh, short and compact and very, very muscular compared to us. And they also tend to be very strong. Okay. All right. Oh, well, gotta All watch right. your arm wrestling and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, they, look, um, they look like Greek gods, basically, for those that Little are short Greek first. gods. Yeah, little short Greek gods. Short and Greek gods. I mean, they're wonderful. They're wonderful people. They're the genetic progenitors of the Greeks. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Next question. I've heard that some UFO shows are talking about the off world civilizations that think that Terrans are stupid or useless or whatever else. And then they spoke of how most of them have arrogance issues. What sort of civilizations would hold these opinions? Oh, the reptoids, for sure. Yeah, the reptoids, um, the Alcyons, um, who were the ones that sold Terra to the reptoids. Um, there's, I mean, they're out there. They exist um, way up, you know, into the higher dimensions. There's Yep, there, there's a few uh, bungholes running around who um, suffer from massive superiority complexes. We always have to take okay. them down a peg or two when we catch them. Yeah, okay. higher dimensional does not ultimate, you know, does not automatically mean better. Yeah, you're not going to turn into a sexless ball of light, and unfortunately, there is still um, differences of opinion to quite high dimensions. And there are still people who suffer from inflated opinions of their own self-worth in relation to others. Okay. You mean um, there's egos question. up there? <laughs> yes, there are, in fact, egos at higher dimension, although I'm wow. sure there are a lot of people who would like to tell you that this is not the case in order to make you think that they don't have agendas. But, yes, some oh. people still do have egos at higher dimension. You see less of it, especially among positive societies, and it isn't quite so uh, all-consuming, but there are people who still have egos and suffer from ego issues. It's just less common. Oh, okay. Okay, question for Drake, and then after Drake answers that they want to hear the same answer from Tanath. Um, if we are going to live hundreds of years, and there are six billion or more people on the earth now, and if willing, we will be able to just create babies, Will there be enough room for all of us? It seems like there will be an awful lot of us roaming around. Well, first of all, not everybody's going to go into the uh, next dimension. A lot of people will opt out. Right, Drake? Yeah, well, what I've been hearing from the people is very simple. A lot of people are not going to, not going to even entertain the idea, so therefore they're going to have to go somewhere else. It's not an option because the planet is going through uh, the transition and everything on it goes with the planet. So uh, the other part of this is that, uh, you know, um, what, what, uh, if somebody had an option, and I'm, I'm going to put this as plain and simple as I know how to do it, uh, if you had an option, you can put around on the planet here, or you, <laughs> now think about this, as in Star Trek, can get some training and go flitting around the universe, what would you choose to do? I'd be willing exactly. to guess. We're, I, I bet you we're going to lose half the population, especially younger folks who, who are going, out there going, wow, man, I can, I can, I can dig to flitting around the universe. Um, I, I think we'll, we'll probably lose half of whoever stays here just to go out and explore. That's yeah. my opinion. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. You think... Um, I've heard estimates varying between 40% and 60% of the population will choose not to ascend. Um, so there's going to be a good chunk of people that don't want to. And again, this is choice. Don't want to. Not forced not to. Not forcibly evicted. Don't want to. And then there's the chunk who are incarnate and aren't necessarily going to be considered uh, Terrans. Then there's the naturalized Terrans who will also have the chance to go back to their original home worlds 
or their home people. And then there's the chunk that's left over, many of whom probably get space fever and want to get out there and start exploring. Um, we're thinking that it's probably going to be about around 1 to 2 billion people who opt to stay on a permanent or semi-permanent basis on this planet. And from them, they're not all going to be uh, clamoring to um, to uh, reproduce right away. It's typical to have 100 years or more between children. It is not typical to have bucket loads of children unless your species is dying out and you really, really need to repopulate. I mean, you're not going to see things like the quiver folds going on at that level. It's unheard of. Also, a population that's left to its own devices, you know, much like uh, much like any other animal species that's on a planet, will it'll self-regulate. Self-regulate, yeah. And well, there's no need for multi-human disasters either. Well, the the generation presently is semi-mobile and would like to be able to tool around. And I'm I'm telling you, I mean, I can just see the teenagers in their hot rod spaceship. Cruise in the universe. I can really see that. Oh yeah, and you know, if organizations such as mine will plan on uh, on recruiting, and I'm I'm pretty sure we got a lot of takers, people who are interested in joining an outfit such as uh, the Silver Legion, and you know, won't be quite like uh, you know, join the army. They said, see the world. They said, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot more fun than that. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, there, there'll be options, you know, and opportunities for people that want to join the Federation, you know, and even if they don't want to join as part of a member planet, they can still join as an individual. We don't, we don't prevent that from happening. Okay. Um, all right. One of our listeners wants Top to talk about the final solutions, if possible, please. The final solution? Uh, mm-hmm. I don't... Uh, I don't know. What? Are you talking about Hitler's final solution? Because, like, we don't condone that. I don't know. I was just no, saying. This, was... this is the this is the futuristic uh, final solution. Um, it's a combination of things. And uh, it is sort of a, a combination of Hitler's solution and uh, the possibility, and this is one of the uh, outtakes on it, was that so many people would get so interested in going up, going someplace else that nobody would be home. Uh, that the, the the human race might not even come back, uh, you know, even to their home world. And those you're getting into the twilight zone, make believe uh, areas that uh, the probabilities are almost negative. They don't. It, it's almost impossible to have something of that nature take place. So the final solution of E.T. being um, all that in terms of superior and lording it over us is not going to happen. I know them, and they're not like that. Second part is that what they're going to do is to uh, help us become a, as much as possible the way, not only the way we were supposed to have been in the first place, but uh, to arrive and even exceed the levels that they are at, the ideal of a teacher or a mentor. Okay. Uh, okay. There are allies with. Um, there are. We do have allies who go by the, the philosophy of speak softly and carry a big stick. And the cabal are well aware of this, so I'm not too sure how how much they want to push the limits of that. Okay. Um. All right, here's a question. My mom has an aneurysm in her brain and just got rushed to the hospital. If she passes, will I see her when we ascend, or is there a way that if I pray more than normal that she'll be okay and stay till ascension? I lost my dad already, and I'm not ready to lose my mom. Um, We can't control life and death. Uh, Things like that, trust that your mom will be there for you. Whether it's in the fourth dimension, whether it's here, she'll be there for you. Okay. We okay. don't have uh, we don't have the means right now to to, to physically intervene. Um, there is the concept of somebody's time. For instance, when it's somebody's time, there's not much you can do. 
I don't know if this is the case with your mom. Um, I don't know if you can uh, pray her well. Certainly we talk about the power of positive thought and um, attraction, the principle of attraction. Those things certainly won't hurt your mother. Okay. But uh, I can't give you a definitive answer on that other than to say that you're not you're not going to lose her, and it, you're not going to lose her permanently. She'll be there for you. Okay. We still have page after page after page of questions, so I'm going to try to shoot these, and we'll try to get them as rapidly answered as possible, Kane. Okay? Um, imagine that. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Um, um, okay. I would be interested in knowing a little bit more about Sunfire. We know little about her. Uh, where does she live? Based on and based on her use of the English language, she sounds like she was maybe born in the and raised in the U.S. and made to live near me. <laughs> well, I am in the United States. Um, I am a Chalcedian incarnate, and I'm a diplomat for the Galactic Federation of Planets. Um, that's honestly about all I can say right now. Okay. Um, let's see. These are questions for mainly Sunfire. Um, who was the first race of beings in the Milky Way galaxy, and who created or brought them here? Um, as far as I know, um, from, from what I know of galactic history, it was the Lyrans, and we... Um, I beyond that I don't I don't know who exactly created them. There's you know, they may have came from a different galaxy at this point. I think they even may have been from the Andromeda galaxy. Okay, and do we know what race created our solar system? Um, Source created our solar system, but um from the original creation there's been multiple races that are capable of um geoengineering planets stars, that kind of thing, that have been since the dawn of time or dawn of existence of this universe anyway, um, making changes and and tweaking things and doing this and doing that. And so I mean, they evolved, had involvement in making changes to the solar system since it was created. Okay. What race created Earth slash Gaia slash Terra and all the living plants and creatures on her? Earth was created in the Earth a major system. I don't know who specifically as a race created the planet. It was moved here from that system, and it's been moved about three or four times since, and there's been multiple different races that have contributed to the plant life and animals and human populations as well. It's like okay, hundreds who, of different races. Okay. Um, who was the first race of beings on planet Earth, and who created or brought them here? If they were created and not brought here, how were they created? It was humans. The reptoids like to claim that they were here first. They weren't. It was humans. Um, and as far as who created them, source. <laughs> Likely okay. either source or some other um, some other higher dimensional beings that create, you know, create populations of humans and other different races and beings. I don't know who specifically. From what galactic race or races did Filipinos originate? Or were they just originated um, with the rest of humans? I believe it is that they're just like an offshoot of the Asians, and most of the Asian races were created by um, a combination of a large influence of Procyon and Andorani, um, combining their genetics and just kind of seeing what happened. I know there's been some reptoidal influence in the Asians, but it's mostly a combination of Procyon and Andorani. I think there's some... Um some of the uh, are, are some of like the the vegans and and I'm not talking about people who eat uh, vegetables. I'm talking about from the Vega star system. The Vegas were um, and I, yeah, I think that was one of the questions that somebody asked. The Vegans were the predecessors to the Syrians, the Nakote, the African Americans, Amazonians, 
Because the Lyrans were, um, the Lyrans and the Vegans were two of the um, the founding races of the Milky Way galaxy, from what I understand. And the Lyrans were the ones that were behind most of the lighter skinned races, and the Vegans were the ones that were um, behind more of the darker skin races. Okay. Um, can all of the 3D humans in other planets and other universes remember their past lives? Is ability to remember past lives a universal or normal attribute for a 3D sentient species throughout the universe? It's actually, it's normal for everybody across the board. And, yeah, all other 3D races that have not been manipulated by the reptoids or some other race to not remember their past lives, do you remember the past lives? The reason why the majority of Terrans don't is because of the intervention on a genetic and DNA level of the reptoids on Anaki when they were messing around um, and the various veil systems that have been put in place and are being slowly sealed away. The various okay. soul traps and memory wipes, you know, you know, soul wipes and that kind of thing. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, uh, can you comment on on if or what um, you are doing now to help disarm much of the direct tragedies that are happening to humanity on our planet? A lot of that's tactical information that I can't reveal. It's classified. Okay. <laughs> I have to say that's a very good answer. Um, we're keeping a close eye on the situation, and we're uh, aware of things that are going on, and we're doing what we can. But like uh, Sunfire just said, that's uh, that's tactical information, and we'd rather not advertise uh, everything we're doing to stymie the other side. Gotcha. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, just just like Drake yeah, and you don't, stuff. You know, in, in battle, you don't give your playbook to the other side any more than you do when you have a football game. Right. Okay. Um, are all human species oxygen breathing in the universe? Could you also give examples of sentient races or of nitrogen breathers or methane breathers or even CO2 breathers? And also, can an oxygen breathing mate with a nitrogen breather? If so... How would that work, and how about their offspring? Would they be simply both oxygen or nitrogen breathers? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what a loaded question. Yeah. Um, there's um, not only human, not only among the humans, but among all the other um, sentient species, there's, um, there's all different types of breathers. The... One of the most commonly well-known nitrogen breathers is the Draco reptoid. Um, as far as uh, cross-breeding between two different breathers, I don't know if that's even possible. I certainly have not heard of it being possible. Okay. All right. Next question. I'm experiencing everything, including myself, as not being real. It's really hard to describe in words. I think it is a matter of perception, but it wasn't always like this. It's like I seem to perceive the world subconscious instead of consciously now. What might be happening? I, it's similar to thinking while biking, and all of a sudden you come, become aware of the fact that you are at your final destination without remembering what kind of areas you passed, uh, kind of oblivious. Again, I have trouble with describing this. Does either Drake, Tanath, or Sunfire know what this might be? I've heard of it. I don't, uh, I'm not deeply familiar with it, but I have heard of it. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. There's a whole lot of things that uh, people are going to experience that they have not experienced before. Uh, those are not very limited in terms of what a person might see uh having a dream or uh suddenly feel uh when uh, as we approach the transition more and more sensitivities of all different kinds are going to start popping out it's kind of like when you're a teenager and your skin popped out sort of deal you know saying hey you got raging hormones well 
In this case, the pimples are in your mind. And if you understand the difference between um, realities in terms of what happened on the Matrix uh, in comparison to what our supposed reality is, who says our reality is different than that? Uh huh. Think about it. So, possibilities, perceptive capability, the willingness of a person to think about the possibilities that uh, there are things going on, they're being told about them, but not everything. We can't cover each individual. You got a set of fingerprints that's different from everybody else. So, you act, react, and perceive just slightly differently than others. The ideal is to get the general information out so that you get a, can get a handle on it and not be scared uh, to the point of uh, defecation at the point where, uh, you know, somebody flips the switch and off we go. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Um, okay. I guess some people are complaining that we're having trouble with um, audio again. They're saying we're sounding like we're talking from the bottom of the metal barrel. I'm sorry, there's not much we can do about the audio at this point. There's, uh, well, we're lucky to be even online. It yeah, appears we that are. the fan club didn't even want us to be here today. So, um, you know, we're just happy that we can be here in any form. I'm, I'm sorry that the audio is not optimal. Yeah, and I have to apologize also to our audience. I had to once again request donations today. Um, the reason being that I got a message from blog talk radio today that something hiccuped in their system and uh, we will not be getting our advertising dollars for the month of may until the end of june um or for the along with the month of june probably in july so um um, i didn't get my advertising money for this month so we're going to need a little bit of help a leg up (laughs) a hiccup Uh uh-huh uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. How convenient. Um, yeah. So anyway, they're going to hold our advertising dollars and I guess earn a little bit of interest. <laughs> I don't know, but whatever. Uh, okay. Um, so every, uh, every. Okay. This next question is uh, everyone. This may sound rather silly, but I've been told that the the creases on one's palm hands, you know, the palms of their hands, cause certain identifying marks to appear when their palms are cupped and are an indication of what star race a person may be descended from. Supposedly, if you look at your slightly cupped palm, you will see either a capital M or an S. The M would designate that you are descended from Lemurians, and the S would designate that you are descended from the reptilians or snake race. Archons from Atlantis, uh, kind of brand or owner's uh, mark, so to speak. Is this true? I've also seen this on a video on YouTube that says that there's a barcode on your DNA designating your star race. Would that be true? That was the first time I've ever heard of that. I got a V on my hand. A V? A V. You seen that Ah. movie V? (laughs) I, I I I would say that pretty much none of that's true um, because... There's more than just the Lemurians and, Ar- and Atlanteans, and the Atlanteans were not the Ar- were not the Archons. Um, and okay. I mean, you know, like I said earlier, and I've said multiple times, there are 22 to 25 different races of humans that have contributed to the genetic engineering of the current Homo sapiens humans. Parents, whatever you want to call them. So, you know, to narrow it down that far would be, you know, unwittingly putting limits on people that, you know, <laughs> unwittingly putting limits where there shouldn't be any. Okay. Um, all right. A couple more questions from the same person. And again, we're going to try and rush through because we've still got so many questions to answer. Tanath mentioned in the last show that some of the people's living in the hollows of Earth are the bad guys, and that the Ar- Ar- Argothians or Argothians are neutral. I understand that. The last remaining refugee, Lemurians, from Mu, are living in a city called P- Telos under Mount Shasta in California. Is that true, and are they physical or energy beings, and where would their alliances lie? They're like fifth or sixth dimension 
Uh, yes, they're really there. They, um, they're not exactly on the um, happy list right now. Okay. It, was, it was a Telosian that got the roof dropped on him. Okay. All right. Then weren't they removed? And also, I do believe they were. Yeah, and also there's a difference between Lemuria and Mu. It's one of the things that really, um, I guess, grinds against is the wrong way. Lemuria was where Malaysia is, and Mu Pacific was the the big continent in the in the middle of the Pacific. So they're not one and the same, despite what you know many are trying to cause confusion over. Okay. Um, next question is. Tanath, there's an old story that the unicorns, which were created on Atlantis, are enemies of the dragon race. Is that your race or the reptilians? The answer will tell me whether or not unicorns are evil or not. And as I have been told that they were created with fully active 12-strand DNA and are higher dimensional creatures. Uh, They're not enemies of dragons, but they definitely are enemies of reptilians. Uh, unicorns, pegasi, and alicorns, or if you want to call them uh, unipegs, are, um, well, I wouldn't say they were created here, but there were populations brought here. Many positive planets have unicorns, pegasi, and unipegs. Um, and they're, you, you don't own one of them. They own you. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> as, as a dragon who is currently owned by a unipeg, I can attest to this. Tazar, uh-huh. okay. uh, in no uncertain terms, lets me know what he thinks about my uh, choices in, for instance, uh, romantic partners <laughs> and whatnot, and uh, considers um, he has quite a bit of input <laughs> into my life. No, I can I can choose to argue with him, but uh, he makes his opinion known. <laughs> Yeah, you know, okay. it, it's kind of like, you know, when, when you try to argue with a unipeg, you're staring at something that has a three, about a two and a half to three foot tall, razor sharp horn that can use it not only for stabbing things, but can also use it to throw energy around. And like any other horse or horse, you know, equine ex- ex- species, they've got legs and they know how to use them. Uh huh. Okay, this last this last question from this person is for Tanath. Tanath, I swear I've heard your voice before. In fact, your voice is so familiar to me that I can almost picture your face in my mind, but it's blurry. So just on the off chance that I have seen you somewhere, you wouldn't happen to be a Canadian actress who has appeared on TV or movies, would you? I don't mean that oh, uh, no. to, out, to out you, or uh, so don't answer if you, if you don't want to. If not, I will just continue to try to figure out where I know you from. I mean you no disrespect. It's just driving me crazy and distraction trying to figure out where I might know you from. (laughs) I am a Canadian. I am a private citizen. I have, to the best of my knowledge, never been in the public eye. Uh, So you're not likely, you're never going to have seen me on a YouTube video. You're never going to have seen me on television or anything like that because uh, I've never made a deliberate appearance on any of those. Okay. 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 Um, I have a question I, I, I would like to have um, answered, please. I understand that we are receiving help cleaning up our skies from different space crews. However, I'd like to know why these chemtrail planes are even allowed to take off and continue to spray the world. If nukes have been disabled, why can't the chem planes also be disabled? That is a um, a very, very um, convoluted answer, or question to answer. <laughs> there are uh, a lot of reasons why we cannot just willy-nilly stop them. Um, a lot of them have to do with making sure that uh, we don't, wrongfully uh, take out innocence and also with making sure we don't give uh, any fodder to the false alien invasion scenario that they want to spin so badly we would really really like to um, to ground them permanently um, and we are working on that but again that falls into the realm of uh, of uh, confidential operational information 
And also okay. um, priorities and resources. We don't, you know, when it comes to deciding about dealing with, you know, a, you know, a potential EMP attack or, you know, a false flag nuclear attack, or grounding a bunch of chemtrail planes, you know, with something that is not an immediate threat to the global population, and you only have so many, you know, so many resources, what are you going to do? You're going to take something out, you know, and deal with something that's a, you know, immediate imminent threat to the global population, or are you going to deal with something that's um, about as annoying as a fly? Okay. Here's a complicated question. Any, any information on the current operational state of the Niburian Crystal Temple Network, NCTN, communication system of Earth, which was Anunnaki controlled via the net Niburian diodic crystal grid, NDCG, at Stonehenge, England? Yeesh. Hello. I don't think Stonehenge was having anything to do with that. Stonehenge was doing something else. Okay. <laughs> I've never heard I of hear the Drake laughing. Nib you got a comment I, there? Yeah, Mr. I've never heard of the Nibu Nibu Nibiru Nibirunian right. it, Crystal okay. Temple Network. First of all, it's got it's got Nibiru in there and people just love their Nibiru, but I'm sorry Nibiru is not a factor anymore. I would Period. say anything that, yeah, anything that, you know, has the word Anunnaki or Nibiru in it, it's not a threat, or it's already been dealt with, or it's a bunch of horse talk. Or it's a small band of holdouts that really don't have enough uh, oomph to take their threats out, off. Okay. Okay. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Drake, any last comment on that one? Guess not. Um, okay, um, recently on the Animal Planet, I see numerous clips and dis uh, clips uh, also on the Discovery Channel that there have been recordings and sightings of mermaids. Are these real? Anybody there? Oh, I guess we all got disconnected. We dropped. Yep. Okay, um, let me see what we can do to bring back our caller. Um, let's take a sound, uh, a, a one song break. I'm, I'm, um, I've lost the call, and they were interconnected between Drake Tanoth and Sunfire. So uh, when I lost one, I lost them all. Um, we are going to uh, play uh, yet another request um, from uh, Sunfire, I do believe it was. Um, this is um, a four-minute song, and we will... Be right back with um, hopefully our technical difficulties resolved. Okay, and we're back, and I do believe I have our gang on the line here. Are you with me, gang? Oh, yeah. Yep, we're here. Okay. Drake was going to try to call in via his regular phone, and but I don't see him on the board just yet. Um, is Drake with you guys? I believe so. He'd okay. have to unmute himself, but yes, he uh, he's piggybacked along. Okay, all right, uh, all right. All right, let's get back to the questions because we sure have a whole bunch of them. Um, a follow-up question to the last question that we, we were able to cover. Um, if we cannot stop all the planes from taking off, the chemtrail planes, and if you are in the process of cleaning up the skies, why are those nasty white, black, purple, and gray toxic clouds still left behind that are blocking our once beautiful blue skies and blocking our sun. It's a process. It's a process, not an on-off switch. Um, we keep cleaning up. They keep spraying. Uh, sooner or later, they're going to have to run out of resources to do so, at which point we will still keep spraying or er, cleaning up the spraying. So there's Honestly, we're not the ones who are dictating what they're putting up in the uh, in the sky. We're just doing our best to clean up after it. It will get taken care of one way or another eventually. It's yeah, not one necessary of our to freak out over it in the meantime. 
Yeah, I mean, if it lizard. gets you hot enough under the collar that you step up and do something about it, and by do something, I don't mean throw a fit. Um, I mean, do something constructive about it, then it's motivated you to do something and make a positive change. But uh, complaining about when we're going to fix the problem isn't going to help much. We're doing what we can right now. We're limited. Our hands are tied. When our hands are no longer tied, we'll do more. Right. Uh, One of our listeners is suggesting, uh, why don't we just disassemble the damn planes on the ground? That would take care of the problem. Well, you disassemble them, they'll just put them back together or they'll make more. Yeah. And they're not just using straight chemtrail planes. They're putting the chemtrails um, mixture in passenger jets of, you know, people that are using, um, you know, public air transportation. And that, you know, creates another problem because they know we won't go after, you know, the passenger jets because of the you know, our desire to protect as many innocent lives as possible. And they're using that to their advantage right now. Okay. All right, next question. The civilization under Mount Adams in Washington State, are they the same race of people as those that are under Mount Shasta in California? I would think that there must be, must have an underground connection between them somehow. Did you get that? Yeah, Sunfire, is that something that you... Uh... As far as I understand it, there's been a great battle um, for the base or area under Mount Adams for a long time. There was positives that, that lived under there, and then they were kicked out by the Greys, and somewhere along the way there was, you know, some reptoids that came in and kicked them out, and then there was some of the... Of the uh, some other race that came in and kicked the reptoids out, and now they're there. And I honestly don't know who they are. I don't know if they're positives, neutrals, negatives. Um, I do know, you know, given that we mentioned earlier that Telos was cleaned out, um, there's probably no connection between the two. That's right. Uh, uh, music chairs down there. <laughs> they also, yeah, they also wanted to know, and I, it appears not, that if either of you have visited any of these underground places or if you know of anybody that has. You wouldn't be able to get me to set foot in one of those places without a huge and able bodyguard. And, I mean, yeah, we do have um, we do have some of our, our diplomats that have, you know, visited down there frequently, and, and that is, you know, part of the, you know, initial negotiations, and they got, you know, that area got cleared out, so. Okay. All right. Um, I would also like to remind everybody we're coming up on about 20 minutes um, um, until we transition into overtime, um, and I foresee that we will probably go into a little bit of overtime if all of you are are able to. Um, and, oh, yeah. um, I'm down with it. Okay. And um, if uh, if so, um, our callers need to be called in at 646-716-4984 or you will be disconnected from live broadcast and you will have to wait till we complete the show and it's archived and can be played back. So if you want to continue listening live um, and hear the end of the show, please call in 646-716-4984 and, um, and then you will be able to listen to this show in its entirety live. Okay, um, next question. Um, I read that there are more and more special children with special abilities and DNA which is resistant to disease. They have often been referred to as indigo children. The article has also stated that their DNA resistance is spreading to other people. Is this true? They're um, actually indigo, crystal, rainbow, it's all another term for an incarnate basically. And from what I understand, they're being born with between three and four DNA strands instead of the normal two that um, other people have. And that's where they're they're getting this DNA, you know, this resistance and um, all that from is the extra strands of DNA. Okay. Uh, question, I'm seeking the truth. Specifically, I'm interested in the history of the planet Earth. 
how or where could I find uh, information on the history of Earth and our galaxy and past interactions with other beings? I imagine I could find all of this maybe on the Akashic records, but I've also heard that it is a compilation of everything that was ever thought by ne- not necessarily just what actually happened, which is what I'm looking for. Or is there not one truth of our history? Is it all subjective and everyone has their own truth and sometimes it lines up with other people's truth? I also want to learn to astral travel with the intent of contacting the Silver Legion and offering my talents to their cause. Could this information be learned there? I would suggest, as far as anybody wanting to learn any proximity of any real truth about the real history of the um, of the planet and the galaxy, start with things like um, there's a book called Worlds Before Our Own, and um, I believe it's by Brad Steiger. Um, there was a website called uh, Forgotten Ages Research by Joseph Robert Jockman that was taken down, and you guys can find any of his articles. Um, also, Defending Sacred Ground by Alex Collier is a good, um, like, introduction to the history of the galaxy and Terra. Um, and then, yeah, if you guys can, if you can access the Akashic records, then I would, I would say, you know, kind of fly around there. But there is very minimal in the public world of any accurate um, history. Um, Ancient Aliens TV series, they have a lot of important information, very valuable and valid information. If you can the stand th- the host. Well, yeah, if you can stand the host. The only thing I have to say about Ancient Aliens, the only thing that bugs me about that series is, well, they're putting all this information out that is very valid and very useful and really good. They're still trying to fit it in too short of a time frame. The human population has been around 400, 500,000 years as in its current form, and they're still trying to kind of smash it all down into about 10,000 years. So it's like, you know, take what they're telling you and just stretch it out a lot further. Um, okay. I might have something to do that. I might have something to do that. Go ahead. Uh, I, wrote a, I wrote that book specifically to give people the basics for how to in terms of astral travel. Get it, study it, practice it, it works. Uh, it gives you the basics. The information in there is condensed. In other words, you really got to study it in order to get what get out of it what it has in it. As okay, you practice will, it, it'll become a reality. It'll it'll become a reality. Yes, and I will share with everyone. Um, I think that's there on, is a the, link. on the Go ahead, that's on the website, isn't it, uh, Denise? Yes, it is. I was going to share that the, that is on your website on AmericanNationalMilitia.com. And um, if you get past the the black area with the different links, um, and, and then you go down to where you would actually read the link, it's off to the right hand side at the top of the column, and it's got like a rather it's like a brown cover, and it's me myself and I multiplicity, and you click on the book, and it will take you to the uh, Lulu website where you can purchase the book. Yeah, and also I wanted to just add, like, um, a few other really good authors to check out would be, like, David Hatcher Childress um, and books like The Forbidden Archaeology, Forbidden History, the books that explore history that isn't part of the written history form and don't dump a bunch of religious indoctrination on top of it. Anything yeah, well, along those it. lines, you're going to find, you know, a lot of very valuable information. Also, check out mythology. And as much mythology that hasn't been, like, put out in the public form, the more, the older the book, the better when it comes to mythology. Because there's a lot of real true history in the mythology. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Have civilizations on other planets in 4D move? Do they have, like in 4D, have a movie industry like Hollywood, like we do? And if so, what would be your favorite extraterrestrial movie, girls? Um, not quite the same. I mean, there is various forms of entertainment. Um, there's quite a thriving hollow 
adaptation or ho- holodeck industry in which you can get holodeck programs and you know when i when i say industry like these things are just given and traded around to anyone who wants them because um, we don't use currency and we don't have a financial system but yeah you know there is entertainment out there um people love movies people love reading people love uh playing in the hollow deck um in the arena too which functions very similarly to the hollow deck in that regards there's um a group that is making a hobby of copying a lot of our media and trans uh tra- transferring it or adapting it to the hollow or even to the arena like um if anybody here is familiar with Skyrim there is an arena program that permits you to play Skyrim in fully immersive first person you know forget screen and mouse you're running around and using your bow and collecting uh armor as you go and things like that you know so there there is uh there is fun in games there is entertainment there is things that are similar to movies there are creative endeavors there are people who like to write and make stories and things like that so you, you know you're not going to lose that there's even nightclubs <laughs> oh yeah there's nightclubs especially on there's, Amazon yep there's um one of the things they just opened recently and I was being encouraged to um talk about it on Zeta I know we talk about that planet a lot they took from here on Terra they took a scan of every single roller coaster in existence and they modified them to operate in Zeta's, you know, atmosphere and on, you know, within the conditions that are natural to Zeta, improved the safety of them, improved the excitement and fun parts of them, and they opened this huge roller coaster amusement park. That's and it's cool. like every roller coaster in the world. And they're, as far as what I've been told, they're adding to it constantly because there's there's different, like, ship designers and other designers that are, like, coming up with these ideas for different roller coasters. And I bet my bacon-loving brother would really, really enjoy that. <laughs> I'm sure. It's become a really big hit. I mean, they said they've got people coming from all over the galaxy just to... Just to visit play on the roller coasters. I do know that they like to camp. Uh, a lot of them like to camp. My bacon loving brother um, followed me in spirit projection last year when I went quadding. Fell in love with quadding. Developed a hover quad of his own that was designed to basically function like a quad without doing the same sort of damage to the uh, animals in the flora that a, a, a terrestrial quad does. And uh, now hover quads all over the place. <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked to find out he's also monopolizing the roller coasters. <laughs> <laughs> From what I've heard, he yeah, he spends a lot of time when he's when he gets his shore leave, he goes and spends a lot of time on the roller coaster amusement park. And they so um, even put in like cotton candy and ice cream and popcorn stands and with all the poison removed. Yes, and um. I'm being told that they even have, um, like, fruit juice stands. They don't have sodas, but they have, like, juices and stuff and various, like, fruit stands and that kind of thing that, you know, the equivalent of the food that's normal to Zeta and what, you know, they found that they really liked here on Terra and made um, Palestinian versions of it. Okay. Do either of you have a favorite Karen or Earth um, ET movie? E.T. or uh, like the movie E.T. I got a favorite book. The, a favorite book? Yeah, actually, it's it's kind of funny because there's there's one book I read when I was a little kid by an author called Mercedes Lackey. Uh, turns out that just like we pick up on uh, on like we pick up on certain quote unquote fictional universes here, other universes also get those fictional universes too. And I caught Admiral Mander reading a version of this book written on another universe in another language that was um, much, much more explicit than our version. <laughs> oh, okay. That. Okay. I think um, 
probably my favorite as far as like um as far as E. T. alien movies and stuff. Um the the movies from Star Trek the Next Generation. I'm you know, I can't emphasize enough the need for people to go out and watch Star Trek. If they really want to see what you know, what life is like up in space. Go watch Star Trek. Okay. Yeah, it was it was asked uh before if um uh on Drake's last show, actually, I believe it was, if uh, if the people who wrote Star Wars, um, you know, were like maybe incarnates and had, you know, like in particular they Star mentioned Wars, the bar scene. Right. Star Wars is based on the Lyran Wars, which happened about four billion years ago. And from what I understand, there was a very wise um, E.T. Um, that – that we know personally among the you know among the group that mentored Lucas and his team, and the character of Yoda was actually based on him. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Let's get on with the questions because we've got bazoodles of them. Okay. Um, all right. Have, um, I'm curious how it is uh, with studying and teaching generally in 4D. And on other planets, I remember a scene from the movie Matrix where Neo learned Kung Fu in a few hours or a few minutes. Is something like that going to be possible? Yeah, we uh, we do that with languages. Now, um, I don't have that uh, capacity right now, but um, after the transition, I will. I know that uh, it generally takes um, a few hours to get the language and a couple of days for it to settle in fully. Uh, most of the people I know speak upwards of 40 or 50 language fluently. Okay. And that includes off-world languages. So um, it's it's really not that difficult a process. Okay. All right. It was made um, more difficult for us in order to uh, make it harder for us to communicate and also to discourage us from coming together on our on our um, similarities, keep us divided, that whole divide and conquer philosophy. Probably, okay. um, you know, for those that are into languages, the most complicated language in the entire universe that is known um, is the universal symbol language. And um, here's a little tidbit for those that are really into Sanskrit and think it's a dead language. It's actually one of the most commonly used business languages um, in interactions between the Andromeda Galaxy and the Milky Way Galaxy. And um, as far as general education, because people live longer, the um, education generally lasts a minimum of 200 years, but can go upwards of 300 to 500 years, depending on, you know, if somebody wants to be a specialist in one thing or another or whatever, you know, education they want. But people never stop learning as long as they're alive. The universal symbol language also makes really, really pretty crop circles. Yeah. And it's it's really hilarious because, you know, some of these things that people swear are like the deep mysteries of the universe, they translate into things like stop the room, I need to get off. Shut your mouth, you're attracting flies. Yeah, it, they're just pranks. <laughs> Not all of them. Some crop circles are genuine uh, are genuine um, usages of sacred geometry in order to help balance Terra. Some are communications with us directly. Some are threats to uh, the reptilians, and some are just random things that somebody decided would be funny. Doodling. What was right? the one? What was the one um, about coming in pieces? Oh, yes. <laughs> what was it? Something about um, I come in pieces? Where's the yellow, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. The thing, I'm, the thing I'm looking forward to is that we won't have to push one for English anymore. Yeah, that'd be nice. I know really? one of the times, we, um, when we were being funny and we had extra time and our our space friends were bored, we were coming up with different things for them to put down in crop circles. And one of the ones, um, I don't know how many people have recognized this, but one of the ones we did get them to put down was Press Weber Received Bacon. Yes, Press <laughs> Weber Received Bacon. <laughs> okay. And uh, um, I like cheese as a popular 
Okay, question for These Todd and Sunflower. These guys are the practical jokesters, really. They, they just love to play around, which is probably <laughs> why for such a long time the Cabal did not take them seriously. Really? Well, okay, that's, question that's for... Right up till we started, that's right up till we started playing jokes on the Cabal. Yep. Yeah. And then, then we became um, tree-hugging hippies from space. Yep. <laughs> yep. Mm. Okay, a question for Toph and Sunfire. Have you met each other? Not in the not in meat space. Yeah, not in not in the physical sense, but in 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 the space sense and over eternity sense, we've been um we've been busted around the universe and multiverse since uh, a very long time ago. Okay, well before I met- started coming to Earth um, we were best friends in Tau Ceti. We both have a common Tau Ceti and um, ancestry, I guess you could say. Or we've both been Tau Ceti at the same time. And they called us uh, <laughs> Thunder and Sunlight. <laughs> and we made about as much trouble as um, scattered showers. <laughs> okay. Have you met Drake? Again, not in meat space. My um, ability to travel is kind of um, perturbed at the moment. Yeah, well, I'm getting my bikes fixed, so we're going. On. We'll, I will be traveling. You better watch it. Oh no! Ooh, you better uh, walk on the extra walk on that gate. Yeah, I'm not allowed to have bikes in this apartment, Drake. What you gonna do? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Where's okay. my lampshade? And then it would go hide. <laughs> I'm never uh-huh. going to tell what I might do next. That's what the fun of this is. <laughs> well, you're always welcome, and I'll cook you a good meal. Oh, appreciate that. Yeah, you're always welcome here, too, Drake. You know I love you. Okay. When, we, when we're when we in 4D, 4D, will temperature work the same way, like feeling hot and cold? Yeah, you're, yeah, you're going to be probably, uh, your your operating temperature range is going to be a little wider. So um, you're going to be a little more resilient. All right. But, yeah, you'll still feel cold. You'll still feel warm. And you might like it a little hotter than you like it now or a little colder than you like it now. It's, you know. Okay. Um, since shapeshifters are real, are werewolves, vampires, gnomes, fairies, leprechauns, etc., real too? Werewolves, yes. We prefer to call them theranthropes. Um, yeah, there are, uh, there are, I guess you could call them dual forms, shapeshifters who can vary between one form and one distinct other form and perhaps in between stages. I guess you could call them like the, uh, theranthropes and the weirs. Vampires, vampiric creatures exist, some who drink blood, some who feed on energy of others, maybe because they can't produce it on their own or whatever reason. Um... Gnomes, fairies, other things like that. Those those beings usually fall under the Fey kingdoms. They definitely exist. Gremlins, yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun releasing gremlins on people we don't like. Oh, I've had one say hello. It was uh, it freaked me out until I realized it was just a gremlin saying hello. <laughs> okay. Um. Next question. Let's see. Hold on. I gotta. I got so many questions that are still coming in from all directions here. Okay. Um, um, I'm really interested in the answer that both Tanath and Drake were trying to give when the end of the show was cut off last week about the cabal and uh, was it who was it? Um, Gordon Duff. Gordon Duff and Marshall V and Gordon. Summers, right? Let's. I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, let's the show not. again. Let's this not. thing. So soon. Let's not and say we did. <laughs> yeah, we're still uh, we still got an hour left of overtime, so oh, we'll get to that one later. Okay, all right. I'm a holistic healer, and I would like to like to go to school to learn um, live blood microscopy or whatever. Uh, but wonder if perhaps when we move into a fourth dimensional body, we will not require the services such as these. Well, you know what? It's a good service in the meantime, so I wouldn't like uh, stop yourself from doing it. 
Um, as we all know, timelines are fluid. Um, uh-huh. It could be that something like that would have a transferable skill. And then also, there are going to be a lot of holi- the holistic, what we consider holistic and energy type healing methods that are still going to be necessary and required in the higher dimension. So it's a good time to start learning them now and, you know, continue expanding your base knowledge of, you know, various holistic, homeopathic, energetic, and all those other, what they call, quote, unquote, alternative forms of healing. Yeah, those things we call alternative, that's par for the course up there. That's how it's done. It's a, it's a whole organism focus as opposed to treat this symptom with this pill that then produces that symptom, which you then have to treat with that pill. Okay. Um, okay, uh, folks, we're about to transition into overtime, so just a quick reminder, if you haven't called in, do so now at 646-716-4984, or you will be cut off and you will not be able to listen to the ending of the program. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll try to do that if you want to continue to listen. Um Let's see. Um, double checking for more questions. I've got them in window after window here. Okay. Um, question for, uh, well, let's see. We're going to transition into overtime. I think I'm going to have to play another song while we go into um, our transition here into overtime. Um, let's see. I think I had one more song. Um, yeah. Which one am I missing? Um it was Opticon. I'm sorry. Ooh, I like that one. It was Opticon. Um, it's, it's yeah, a, yeah, it's yeah. Kind of a, yeah. Got it's, it. It's got it. Got tea. it. Okay, we're gonna play that one. It's about four minutes long, and we're going into overtime, and we will be right back. Everybody, dial in if you want to continue to hear the end of the show. We'll be right back. All right, and that was uh, Opticon. Um, and that was uh, specially requested uh, by Sunfire. Thank you for that, Sunfire. Yeah, thank you um, for playing it. It's a, you know, it's a really good song, so and it totally fits. So I thought it'd be worth. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, let's see. We have. Oh gosh. We are. Um, once again, we're on page nine of fourteen questions. <laughs> of fourteen pages. Okay. Um, and the questions are still coming. Um, Okay, um, can you give us an idea what kind of technologies Terrans have developed or re-engineered from off-world technologies, not the devices themselves, but the types such as laser or holographic technology? Um, well, you mentioned both right there, laser, holographic technology, fiber optics, uh, internet, internet um, faster than light uh, travel, anti-gravity, uh, over-unity devices, sometimes known as free energy, which is a misnomer, because all our over-unity device does is connect to the source field. Okay. It's not making right. something out of nothing. There's something there. Um, yeah, some of, the, some of the materials we now use commonly um, originally came from reverse engineering Okay. All right. Um, All right. Next question is, uh, Tanath, if we project to the Silver Legion, is there a protocol or a series of events that we need to be privy to in order to enter the outpost, or do we just keep our minds on going there, or do we seek a particular coordinate, if you will? I get lost in Walmart parking lot, just saying. It's intent. It's all intent. I've said this uh, a number of times. Um, it really, really depends on your focus and your ability to maintain that directionality because there is no coordinate. The uh, astral plane moves around, it shifts around constantly. So honestly, it's not like I can draw you a map or tell you where to go. Um, you go to the Silver Legion. Uh, depending on your focus and your intent, you can literally just take a couple steps and you'll be there, or it can be a long, winding journey. Uh, Try not to get too distracted by other things along the way. Um, There is no protocol for entry. You just show up, say, hi, I'm interested in joining, and uh, they'll talk to you more there. Um, Make sure you do your three times test of anyone you meet, especially anyone who's claiming to be Silver Legion. Make sure that they're not 
somebody trying to pull a fast one by saying, oh, yeah, yeah, that's me, when it's not the case. So, you know, look out for yourself, protect yourself, bring your guides along, travel in a group, um, and have fun. Okay. All right. Uh, again, I would like to apologize to anybody who was unable to follow us into overtime. Um, the way Blog Talk Radio works, you must be dialed in to the Blog Talk number, whether you're dialed in through Skype or uh, telephone or whatever, but you have to be blogged in, uh, log, uh, logged into or dialed into that Blog Talk number before we go into overtime or you cannot dial in. It will simply tell you, that the next program is so many days from now, um, and you just can't get in. That's that's why um, you know I try to let people know, you know, call in now or you're going to be cut off. <laughs> so, okay, um, that's just the way it works. Um, all right, I would like to know how the arena or gaming slash training in general will work and how it's implemented. Tonight. Um the implementation of the arena is, uh, we'll call it a trade secret, but what it does is it allows you to um, experience and remember and do stuff without actually hurting yourself, really. So if you get uh, if you get your bottom kicked in in the arena and you end up dead, you wake up in the arena reading, ready room kicking yourself over whatever mistake it was that ended you up dead, but fully able to remember and keep the uh, the training aspect of it so that you can uh, prevent it next time or, you know, learn to work against it. Uh, we developed it as a training tool because um, we wanted what amounted to live fire exercises for our people that uh, did not involve having to resurrect them and send them to the healers or whatnot. <laughs> and that was the solution that we came across. And we decided to do this. We actually based it. If anybody ever played first-person shooters, we based it on the concept of frag matches. We said, well, hey, if you could do this in a game, we should be able to find a way to implement this, that we can do this and get the training benefits and the fun out of this without having to um, to risk our people and we gave it over to the boffins and sure enough they found a way and it's it's proved to be an immense success um arenas are pretty hmm? i was going to say it's also a great place to uh, deal with annoying twerks that are thorning your side for five thousand years oh yes it's proved to be a big hit with our um extra dimensional allies as well uh we've uh, disseminated the arena technology quite extensively among our allies. It's uh, the Androni just absolutely adore it, <laughs> which is probably not surprising at all. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's one of the favorite aspects of the Silver Legion for many is the arena. Okay. Um, all right. Questions. Um, all, all of the conversations that I have been listening to are very interesting. However, I find myself thinking, are they getting all this information from science fiction movies and things like Star Trek? How can I definitively know that the aliens are real? Please help me to find a way to discern whether this is real or not. Either this is real or it has been the best scam since War of the Worlds radio show came out. Well, if it's a scam, I'm not getting any benefit from it whatsoever. And when you consider things like Star Trek are based on real life, reality, real ETs, and not the other way around, then, you know, you take that into consideration and go out, stare at the night sky, ask for um, a light show, and you'll probably get one. Well, and, and here's a little piece of supporting evidence. Have you ever tried to discuss something that you don't know anything about? It's difficult to do. Yeah. I'm able to discuss this so naturally, so fluidly, um, and without having to resort ob to an obvious script or anything like that because this is information I know and that I live. Okay. As for how you can experience it, I can't tell you that because I don't know what your capacities are. When it comes to your discernment, you're going to have to look inside yourself 
and you're going to have to make that decision yourself. I can't tell you. I can't make you. I can't force an experience upon you. That kind of thing doesn't happen. I will say that a lot of the proof has is in plain sight and hidden or kept out of the discourse so that you dismiss it, you know, um, as the product of a lunatic or as the product of uh, of fakery and trickery without actually realizing that some of these things are indeed the case. You know, when I started uh, getting activated for this work, I, I lurked around on ATS, Above Top Secret. Now, it's a shell-filled pile of uh, of WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get there. Um, it's very much a your mileage may vary situation there. But there was plenty of convincing evidence there, and it was some of it was even in the mainstream just overlooked. So, you know, the sources are out there. You're going to have to do some digging around and searching. It's not all going to be handed for you. Sooner or later, it'll all be self-evident. But until then, the onus is on you to do your homework. You you know, this is, you know, we're we're all, we're creatures, you know, of, uh, we're we're just programmed to to question everything, okay? Um, Of course. And that's good. It's better than not questioning anything at all. Right. And a good instance, basis when, for people. When I was, a good base, go ahead, honey. A good basis for people that want actual physical evidence they can see for themselves that aliens exist. All they have to do is look up the past five to seven years of volcanic activity, and you know consider the fact that without the ETs intervening in the volcanic activity alone. We'd all be dead and suffocating in smoke and ash inhalation by now. Yep. That's common sense. That's science. When I was first awakening, okay, the the, the things that I looked for were not physical evidence or visual evidence. It was corroborating testimony. I would would ask the questions of, say, you know, just as for instance, I would ask the question of Drake, and then I would research and I would ask the same question of other people purporting to know these things, okay? And there is no way there is no way that they could all be making up the same things in their head, you know, or or things like like that. You know, you use your own discernment, okay? Um, and uh, and if different people's testimonies corroborate each other, then, you know, you put the pieces of the puzzle together. Right. That, at least that's the way I look at it. So Yeah, I okay. mean, you know, another thing if they want something a little more current, they can look at all the earthquakes that were happening in close proximity to the Iranian nuclear um, power plant that by any realm of, any, you know, concept of understanding how seismic activity works should have leveled that place and it didn't. And I think anybody who um, has gotten this far into Drake's programming and still insists that the cabal aren't real uh, is really um, devastating. Attempting, <laughs> attempting, consciously attempting to stay ignorant. Um if they exist, why is it so far fetched that there are opposing factions? Correct. Yeah, yeah. I have to agree. Okay. Um, the question that was asked earlier about mermaids being real was not answered due to a broadcast interruption. Um, can you re answer that question if mermaids exist? Mermaids yes, exist. Do. Mermaids exist. There are mermaids that are part of the Fey Kingdoms. And there are, and when I say fake kingdoms, I'm kind of talking like we refer, use the term animal kingdom. It's it's not like generally not actual monarchy. Um, there are also um, other intelligent, extra dimensional, and extra planetary species that are mermaids or mermaid like. Yeah, like okay. a, what we generally use the term aquatic because yeah. there'll be you know various. Humans, humanoid, you know, very human. I want to say humanoid is probably the more proper term, and um, fully sentient animal species. Um, there's one race that looks like a cross between a squid and a whale that are aquatic. There's um, another race that has um, basically they look human, but their eyes are a little more fish-like. They just, you know, they still look like the normal human eyes, and then they have 
like webbing between their toes and their fingers, and they have a small fin down the back of their neck and slits below their ribs, you know, where they, you know, where the water breathing takes place. But you know, otherwise they look relatively human. And they're able to breathe okay. on land as well. Yeah. Right. It's and they're animal totally planet. telepathic. Animal Planet ran a two-hour special last Sunday evening purporting to be a documentary indicating the proof of, that mermaids exist, but then they're hearing that that was a complete hoax. Uh, I, I haven't seen it. I could comment on it. I know that uh, uh, a lot of those documentaries are are really made for entertainment purposes, but, yeah, mermaids exist. Whether or not they're always on this planet, I don't know. I don't know if there currently are any mermaids on this planet. Okay. Or if uh, sightings are just matters of wandering dimensional travelers. Okay. Um, okay. Um, this person insists that this question was not answered last week. I seem to remember it was, but nevertheless. Going from 3D to 4D, will it be an instant like throwing a switch or will we go to sleep in 3D and wake up in 4D, or will it be a prog- progression over a short or long period of time? With all due respect, this has been answered by me, this has been answered by Tolik, this is, I'm sure Drake's discussed this too, this has been answered. I will answer it again, um, just so that you can't claim that it wasn't. Uh, the overall transition is a process that takes a number of years the point at which our bodies physically change from third dimensional dense matter to fourth dimensional crystalline um, fine matter will be an instantaneous thing. Snap of the fingers, change, that's it. When most people think of the transition, they are thinking of that moment when our bodies change from 3D to 4D. But the actual change itself is a process. Earth goes through a lot of change, uh, a lot of preparation, which includes the activity of the crust and the poles, which includes the activity of the mantle, which includes the change in the Schumann resonance, or the hum of the planet. Um, That is continuing and will continue after the transition. It also. Um, does include changes in our consciousness in terms of how we think, how we approach information, kinds of things that interest us. A lot of us are finding that we're losing interest in the day-to-day grind in order to focus more on matters of spirituality and and progress. Uh, We're less interested in toil and we're more interested in actual productive work rather than work for the sake of work. So yes, this is an ongoing process. The flip of our bodies from 3D to 4D is instantaneous. Whether it'll happen when we're sleeping or not, I don't know, because from what I know, it happens to the entire Earth simultaneously. So some of us will wake up 4D and some of us will be like, oh, what? did anyone just feel that? What the heck just happened there? So really, uh, yeah, this has been answered. Okay. It, it is my understanding that embodiment is required for the ascension into 4D. Could this be the motivating factor in the old world order's agenda to reduce the population down to 500 million? Or, and would this prevent the ascension of these beings? Thank you for your time in taking to help uh, with broadcasting with us. Well, no, if those beings are not on this planet, what happens is they either go to 4D on their own or they decide to go opt for another 3D life somewhere else. But okay. um, it might very well be why the Cabal, with their twisted understa- misunderstanding of how all of this works, decided to try to kill off all of us, or as many of us as they could. They're still trying to um, imminentize the eschaton, bring about the end of the world. It's not going to work. We're not letting that happen. There is no end of the world. Okay. Um, Tanakh, you mentioned um, that you established contact to them by doing astral projection. Could you elaborate on that and how exactly it is accomplished in detail? Is it similar to an OBE or out-of-body experience? And if it so, is an what advice experience. can you? If so, can you give what advice can you give to a newcomer to learn doing so? Okay, first of all, I personally don't astral travel all that much because I use a form of conscious bilocation, 
and sleep work, which means that I go to sleep, my body is asleep, sometimes it's dreaming. If I'm out of it, I don't remember the dreams. If I'm in it at the time, I do. Uh, I usually don't remember the dreams because I'm usually out of it. But I don't always get to bring the memories back, what I do when I'm out of it, not in, like, clear, coherent memories, like you remember what you did yesterday, more like what you remember when you did when you were five. Um, So I really can't help you with telling you how to astral project because it's not something I'm very good at personally. Uh, I will recommend to people, if you're interested in that, the older work of Robert Monroe is very good. The newer work of Robert Monroe and the Robert Monroe Institute, well, it's been kind of booby-trapped and co-opted and all that. Um, another thing that's a great source is the Internet. Yeah, and then Drake took so many astral travel, too. Exactly. Drake, what was that? Exactly. His book covers astral travel. Yeah. Drake? Yeah, okay, Drake's book there. covers astral travel. So, you yeah. know, there, there's, there's plenty of techniques out there. What works for another person won't necessarily work for you. Yes, it is the same as an out-of-body experience. That's exactly what astral travel is, is an out-of-body experience. There's a number of ways to do this. You can even, if you're not too good at the whole separation thing, if you're like me and, you know, the moment you start separating, um, something yanks you back in. Well, lucid dreaming is another avenue in which you can learn how to um, to separate without having to go through the whole rigmarole. There are uh, options out there. There's forums de- de- uh, um, dedicated to this. There's lots of places where you can go and learn. I'm not going to recommend a particular source over another because what works for one person might not work for you and what works for you might not work for someone else so try what works with you and use that okay once again i will mention drake's book if you do if you can't seem to find it by going to americannationalmilitia.com and clicking on the little icon with the book it is at lulu.com which is l u l u and you look for either the author, which is Drake Bailey, B-A-I-L-E-Y, or you look for the title of the book, which is Me, Myself, and I, Multiplicity. That's Me, Myself, and I, Multiplicity. Okay, so, um, and it deals with astral travel. That's one of the many subjects that it that it covers. Very informative. Highly recommend you get the book. Okay. Um Let's see. Next uh, question. Uh, would you please elaborate um, um, on the people from Vega? Are they actually members of the Galactic Federations of Planets? Uh, Tolek has mentioned them on the Andromeda Council site, saying that they were helping, but I'd like to know a little bit more specific information about what role they are playing in order to help and what they look like and a little bit more information about their culture and any little tidbits that you can think about about who they are. I'm really not an expert on the on that. Yeah, and honestly, there's not a lot that um, not a lot that I can offer. They're the progenitors of the Sir- of the, the people from Sirius A, Nakote, um, the African Americans and Amazonians. Um, they were one of the foundation races um, that were originally the first you know first put here along with the Lyrans and. Um, yeah, they're members of the Andromeda Council. I don't know firsthand or directly if they are part of the Federation or not. I don't think so. Um, as for what involvement they are are involved in as far as helping the, the liberation process, I don't know. I don't have any direct information um, on their specific involvement. They're not one of the groups that I work with on a daily basis, so it's very hard to know what their activities are. Um, that's second half. Okay, uh, this is a question for either of you two girls. Uh, just what is it with the Galactic Federation of Light? The people speak very happy, very love, very light, and yet it seems that everybody who follows the Galactic Federation of Light is full of fear, and uh, you know it's like the sky is falling like Chicken Little. Um, um, they're they're freaking out. They're they're very much pan- seem to be panicked, um, and seem very actually, although they speak love and light, seem to be very negative. Um, well, that that's pretty much a good way of saying it is that they are very negative. The Galactic Federation of Light is an offshoot of the Galactic Confederation, 
which is where all the reptoids and all the bad guys are coming from. And um, they're it's part of a specifically created apparatus designed to uh, soften up uh, human civilizations. Yeah. Not just Terra, not just Earth, but uh, human civilizations. These broadcasts are being sent to a number of human planets. Not and just they're from mind control. And, from you know, I, I don't want to discourage anyone who has a genuine desire to help out and a genuine desire to help for the light. Look at the messages. Look past the keywords, which are there to trigger you into thinking it's, you know, it's all wonderful and good. Look past the triggers that are there to, uh, to program acceptance and look at what is really said. They imply that, number one, a lot of them say that there's no war, which is a lie. They imply that we here on Terra have done this to ourselves, which we know is a lie. They imply that we're some kind of horrible um, planet-sidal psychotic race, which we know is a lie. Yeah, and they imply the that everywhere else in the universe is peachy keen but here which is a lie. They um, imply that, they tell us flat out that they want to invade us. Uh, didn't they promise an invasion for July 9th last year? Didn't they promise an invasion for the London Olympics? Yes, the terminology they used was invasion, not friendly visit, invasion. They've been declaring that it has been decreed that we must have leaders of their choosing it has been de declared by them that their hierarchy has decreed this and that for us without consenting or consulting us, us without our consent. These are not the actions of people who have free will um, as their highest tenet. These are not the actions of people who have other people's best interests in mind. This is not friendly, even if they try to portray themselves that way. The words they're using, if you ignore the love and light trigger trappings that they use to try to hook you in, the words they're using are very disempowering. It encourages passivity. It encourages that you sit on your butt and accept instead of actually going out and doing something about it or thinking hard about it. And a very curious thing happens whenever you dare to speak out about uh, the Galactic Federation of Light. You get flooded by... Um, by people who attack you quite violently with their words, making death threats often, making uh, very, very hostile comments, which is not exactly the, uh, the actions of somebody who is of the light. And there is a difference between um, a, legitimate, a legitimate complaint with uh, with backup, with evidence and demonstration, such as what I am doing right now to demonstrate that, hey, this is this is a, a real thing. I'm not just making this up. I'm not just slandering. Um, and ad hominem attacks designed to silence. We've noticed in a lot of uh, communities that startups try to do this wor work, there is a tactic that is a saturation tactic where they bring in their people and dominate the dialogue so it's all about the Galactic Federation of Light. That is a hostile move. That is actually a battle move to move in all your people and dominate a conversation completely and squelch any discourse that doesn't uh, go according to that conversation. That is a war move. That's a hostile act, and they do it all the time. Um, I know Universal Voice has had its own issues with the information saturation attempts of these groups. Ask yourself. I've even had personal experiences with some GSLers, and the minute you say one word bad about them or that contradicts what they've been programmed to believe and say and all this other stuff, it's like a major attack. And it's not just them verbally attacking you. They usually are, co they usually come with energy attacks on top of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Cr critical Absolutely. analysis 
is absolutely discouraged. Questioning is discouraged. Um, that is not a healthy environment. That is not loving. It is not full of light, no matter how many times they use the words love and light and live in peace and dear ones. Um, these, Those are just the trappings. Those are the trigger words to try to program you to follow along. Those are the honey to make the bad medicine go down, right? Yeah. Yep. Look, at, and look at the actuality of it. Again, I am not trying to slander anyone who is attempting to do a genuine good job and help humanity. But a lot of these, a lot of these uh, beings behind the Galactic Federation of Light, they have agendas that are not according to your best interests. And if you are a genuine light worker, I suggest trying to go it on your own instead of trucking along with them. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, it ladies help and any. gentlemen, we have um, we have a little less than thirty minutes, and I've got about five pages of questions. So we're going to try to rip. Oh yeah, we're going to rapid fire. We're going to really rapid fire. Okay. Um, I've read and heard about Alex Collier and other sources how the Tau Satians Satians are very loyal and had to be convinced not to come get their guy, affectionately called Hank, who had a mission of helping us with our little gray buddies to the reptilians problem. However, Hank crashed in Arizona in 1961. Hank was then taken by the military industrial complex and tortured mercilessly. I'd like to know what became of Hank. Where is he now? Is he all right? And please also tell us more about the Tausati humans, humans information about their culture and what they are like and who they are. Hank, um, I can talk about Hank. I can talk a lot about Hank. Hank does not like to discuss that time. He spent uh, he spent three years in captivity in which he was treated very, very poorly and in which he eventually died from a combination of his wounds, uh, bad medical care, and the treatment itself that he'd received at their hands, at which point the... Um, um, our superior officer had to be restrained because he was quite ready to come in guns blazing. Hank was, however, restored by his people. He is back with them, and he does not look like he was described in that. He uh, he looks significantly different. He has the pointy ears and the uh, the Mediterranean tan skin, but his hair is much more vivid, and his eyes are definitely not brown or black. Um, he is actually um, part of our team. He does not use the name Hank, but we'll refer to him as Hank for this. Okay. He's doing really good right now. He's working again, uh, doing what he was before. The two crew members who were killed with him were also recovered because it was just their 3D shells, the interface that they were using with Terra that were killed. It wasn't them. So they've been uh, recovered and restored to duties, and they're doing fine. Um, Hank is a great guy. He's a very close personal friend of mine, and I love having him around. He's got a, a very interesting opinion on a lot of things, considering that he has actually spent some time down on Terra. Uh, but yes, he's a real being, and he's still around, and he's still... Uh, <laughs> he wouldn't mind some payback. <laughs> He's ready to get her done, in other words, huh? Yes, he is. We learned, we, we learned last week that he doesn't like chocolate, um, <laughs> and most most, no. most of the time... Ta- uh, no, he what, doesn't like chocolate. Uh, is, he the only one, is he the only one of the Tal Study people that actually like chocolate is my brother? And we can't figure, out, we can't figure that one out. Um, but to go back into the... The culture and everything, the Chalcedians were the ones that um, that the Vulcans and Star Trek were based on. They're a positive race. They're um, the lead planet or lead race for the Federation, and um, they're they're pretty advanced. They're they're about 1.2 to 2.4 billion years beyond what is known here in Terra, including the Black Ops stuff. So, uh, and, yeah, the culture is so, 
Is he they're uh, more they're very about friendly me? and curious. Okay. And you want they're to um, notorious for being cuddly. Mm. Like, okay. absolutely notorious for being cuddly. Okay. They're real huggies, huh? Yeah, yeah. they like to hug. They like to snuggle. Um, they're uh, possibly the lack of hugs did uh, Hank in, because I'm sure there wasn't a whole lot of that going on there. Yeah. And their hair color, eye colors range from every every ounce of the spectrum you could imagine, including some colors and shades that aren't even known here on Terra. And um, they're all tan skin, and that kind of ranges in shades too. Um, as far as you know, part of their culture, they really love art. They have a military. They love all kinds of entertainment. As we mentioned before, they just opened a, um, a roller coaster amusement park on their main planet, the third planet. Um, the, they, I've been told the worst that ever happens on one of their planets is that occasionally there will be a heated discussion or debate between two intellectuals, and then they they go right on, you know, after the conversation. They'll go right on, you know, grab some some food together and be like, oh, well, that's talking the whole way. Yeah. They have a fondness for wine, although most Talsetians can't become intoxicated. So they're drinking oh. it for the enjoyment. Okay. Um, let's, okay, rapid fire, let's go. Uh, let's see. Um, um who okay, we've asked this question of Drake, now you girls. Who is Lucifer? <laughs> Lucifer was one of the um original creation beings that was brought into this universe to help handmaiden creation. Uh these beings are often referred to as the lesser gods, the classical gods. He was another one of them. He took the fall for some pretty major stuff that he wasn't actually responsible for. And uh, as a consequence, his name has been smeared big time. And he is, that whole name, Lucifer, is a bit of a trigger for a lot of people. So I want, I'm trying to avoid offending people's sensibilities here. But he, you know, this is not the droid you're looking for. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't what it was claimed to be. That whole story, eventually, it'll come out. Now is not the time because there's still too much programming involved um, for a lot of people to really grasp what happened. But um, he took. He became the universe's biggest fall guy. Okay. Yeah. For somebody uh, else's crime. Yeah, and then the other one that became another big fall guy was Azazel. Yeah, Azazel was actually an angel, not a demon. Not even a fallen angel either. But he took a big smear because somebody didn't like him. Okay. Uh, Please elaborate on twin souls. And just saying, I think Sunfire sounds really cute. <laughs> now, Twin Souls isn't something I'm an expert on. Um, I did discuss a little with uh, Chris and Sherry Geo on uh, Truth Frequency the other night. Um, that show you can probably uh, look it up and look that here and there. I did mention I'm not an expert in that, so they might have more data on that than I do. Mhm. Okay. Um, Next. All right. <laughs> all right. Um, uh, once we enter 4D, will there be a need for colloidal silver? Yes. Be silver is still a very healing substance, no matter what dimension you're in. Okay. Uh, for whoever knows the answer, uh, in the in the recently released Terry Cassidy interview, she interviewed some uh, uh, interviews a willing Fourth Reich super soldier by the name of Michael Prince and Max Spears. Michael Prince talks about how Marduk and his family are now back. Could you elaborate on this and tell us whether he is full of bull? Well, I haven't listened to it. That's hard to say, but honestly, it sounds like a bunch of fear programming and disinformation. 
And I have um, I have a friend of mine that that knew him personally and said that he really needs a lot of help and is full of full. Okay. Um, if it, if it's true that that uh, if it is true what what he said, uh, please tell us how the Silver Legion and Andromeda Council are considering handling this situation. Also, if any of you know why these super soldiers have supposedly recently been moved to the state of Texas, the state that I live in, I would appreciate knowing that. And why do we have heavy hitters and bad guys coming to the state of Texas? Just what is going on? I think they need to be moved to West Virginia, where Drake is. Maybe they're has, uh, has maybe they're collecting in a convenient location for us to get rid of. I don't know. Yeah, as, for, uh, as for what we intend to do about it, if it turns out to be a real thing and a real problem, we'll take care of it. Yeah, or it's it will be handled one way or another. You know, we're not exactly worried. Yeah. As far as Marduk and his uh, and his people, they were dealt with about 400, 450 million years ago when 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 their planet Maldek or was uh, accidentally blown up. <laughs> they went with okay. it. It was it was really uh, not a nice place. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, this guy is not very nice to you either, Drake. He says he thinks they need to move to West Virginia with Drake instead. <laughs> Watch it now. Watch it. <laughs> well, I think it's very nice. that, that Drake will uh, take care of every one of them, get them properly. Yeah, he knows Drake will get her done. that's why he wants them to go to be in West Virginia with Drake, because, you know, Drake will take care of them. <laughs> okay. Um <laughs> Isn't that right, Drake? You'll get her done. All right. Uh, uh, one way or the other. <laughs> okay. Did the U.S. sign a U.N. treaty in 1992 that basically eliminated the Constitution and put the United States under U.N. control? Drake, that's no. your territory. All right. The answer is no. And it, okay. All right. Um, they were thinking this was the reason our government is ignoring our Constitution. Okay. Um, mm, they're ignoring the Constitution because they think they've gotten to a point where they don't have to. And we uh, we intend to show them otherwise, not only us in space, but um, those of us down here on the ground. Right, Drake? You got it. Okay, uh, Tanath and Sunfire, uh, when and how did you become aware of who and what you are? Do you, did you suspect something wasn't right or something was different with you before? Well, I've um, suspected I um, wasn't all that normal from childhood, simply yeah. because all of these things um, in society that people just sort of understand naturally, I just didn't get. I mean, nowadays they probably call that uh, Asperger's. <laughs> Honestly, I think a lot of ki- a lot of kids and adults with Aspergers are incarnates um, because I was operating from a completely different uh, framework of society that just didn't mit- match what I was in. I came awake to what I was, at least in the general sense, at the age of 16. It was a very um, interesting time, so to speak to all the people that I offended with my idiot antics in my teen years, I am very, very sorry. Uh, Keep in mind that I was a teen, being a teen, going through the added stress of being a non-human at the same time and trying to figure out who I was, how I fit in this world, uh, what it all meant, and what what I was going to do about it. So, you know, I made the usual idiot blunders that anybody makes at the age of 16. Um, just in a different forum. As I went on, I learned more and more about myself and the situation. I would say I got a um, kick it into high gear activation at the end of 2011 when I was getting very, very powerful um, internal drivings to get involved and figure out what was going on. And that's when I chose to bring the Silver Legion, which had been around for a long time already, um, into the fray, so to speak. And I was really the only one qualified to be able to do this because I am the prime commander. (laughs) 
So it wasn't like somebody else had the seniority to actually make that call. Okay. Um, next question. Um, um, Sunfire, maybe uh, you yeah. want to tell yours. I, oh. I'll, I'll I'll keep it short and sweet. I you know growing up, I always knew I was different. Um, when I started finding out like who I was and everything, it was kind of like a weird experience. Um, it was. Only a few years ago, my brother actually came down and visited with me, and that was unexpected, but a very, very positive experience, and um, it's just kind of been a wild ride since then, and I wouldn't change one minute of it for the world. Okay, thank you so much. Um, uh, Let's see, let's begin... We've got just a couple minutes left, and I'll just try to quick blow over some of these questions. If we live to be, uh, if we live for eight to fifteen um, thousand years in 4D, does that mean it is a much safer environment than 3D? In other words, are drownings, murders, suicides, and diseases basically non-issues? Suicide is very, very, very rare. Uh, accidents happen, but again, they're fairly rare because most of us have the ability to get ourselves out of that kind of trouble. Um, Big, biggest deal is, unless is you're, disease and health is, is much, much, no, much no, improved. Disease, yeah, disease and health, um, unless it's... Um, you're not going to find degenerative diseases and things that result of that variety at all. Um, if it's a disease of a biological origin, such as, say, a bacteria or a virus or something like that, it's usually introduced and in being used as a weapon. In which case there is um, there is treatment and there will be people who will help to eliminate it, make it better, and cure it. Um, when it comes to uh, natural lifespan, unless you're a warrior, you have every expectation of being able to live out your natural lifespan. Now, warriors, we like to get in the middle of it. So our lifespan is significantly shorter on average because, well, you get in the fights occasionally, you're the loser. It's just how it happens. Every now and then, yeah. you lose. Yeah, a good yeah. um, a good example of that is like the average lifespan for um, a Talisedian is about twenty to thirty thousand years in five D. But the average lifespan of like the um, like a military, military operative, yeah, is more closer to around thirty five hundred years on average. Yeah, if you make it past your 3,000th birthday, you're doing pretty good. Yeah. Okay. If you make it to 10, you're doing really good. Uh, will Will housing in 4D be significantly different, and will there be mortgages? There won't be mortgages, at least not for very long. Um, you, you don't change an entire financial way of doing things overnight. Uh, there are things that can change financially overnight, but... The plans are currently to phase out the financial system over a period of about 10 to 15 years. Uh, so you won't have mortgages for very long. If you're locked into one of these 50-year mortgages, don't worry, you're probably not going to have to deal with it all those 50 years. Um, okay. When it comes to the ownership of property, that is not something we do. Mm-hmm. It's not necessary. Okay, cool, cool. Um, okay, uh, free will, will we have it or not? This is really, really important to me. If free will isn't real, what's the point to life? I believe that I can yes. only be influenced, not mind-controlled, unless I allow myself to be. Is that true or not? Yes, yes, and yes. Um, in order to be able to resist mind control, you have to be aware that it's going on. Once you're aware that it's going on, it becomes a lot easier to resist. Um, Some people are spontaneously more resistant than others. But, yes, free will is real. It's one of the things we're working at ensuring happens here because there have been those who have been trying to take it away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Okay, let's uh, let's see. Quick, quick, quick. Um, Let's see. Um, To what planet, species, or uh, race or species did the Druids come from and belong? Are they 5D or higher? They came from... 5D and 6D, and they're the Pegasus system, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the main planet is the Pegasus constellation. Okay. Could you describe uh, how does a negative 4D planet civilization look like? For example, how does a 4D planet operate in a negative way? 
Well, for a good example of how uh, a negative society operates, go pick up a copy of R.A. Salvatore's um, Driz du Orden series, the one that uh, takes place in the Underdark. And you'll have a very, very good example right there of how a negative society runs regardless of dimension. Okay. Yeah, I um, agree. Okay, have you tried using the supplement RNA drops? The creator is a non-physical being that goes by the name Ion, and he has talked with Bob and Carol and Dean on their radio show for three years now. They say the RNA drops help you to create new perfect cells and that RNA drops will speed up the ascension process. Do you know wh who or what type of being Ion is? Thank you. Ion is, a, um, is an AI that is being ran by the reptoids. Um, I don't have the money for things like RNA drops. I'm focusing more on things like keeping my family fed uh, than enriching somebody else on right. an unproven thing. Gotcha. For me, if okay. if I, uh, you know, when it comes to things like that, you don't you don't need you don't need any assistance to ascend. You're going to ascend. So if it's promising yeah. to help you ascend, it's selling you a refrigerator when you live in the Arctic. Gotcha. Okay, question. Um, I think we're all clear on the fact that replicators provide such things as food and clothes. However, does does one return the dirty dishes and clothes to the replicator to be dematerialized and the energy stored yep. for other applications? Yeah, yep. yeah. we manifest as well as manifest, and um, uh, it, it does store the energy and, and then bring it back out again. Uh, you never have to do laundry again. <laughs> I think this oh, might be why God. some incarnates have a problem with housework, because... We're used to environments that clean themselves, laundry that does itself, dishes that clean up after themselves, <laughs> and even beds yeah. that make themselves. Yeah. Okay. I know um, for usually for, like, clothes, we have a um, – for, like, clothes, there's what they call a or matter recycler. And for, like, food, the dishes, that kind of thing, as soon as you're done with it, you just put it in, in the replicator, push a button, and it demanifests. And – um, they work on a kind of an over unity type thing, so it's not exactly storing energy and matter. It just, you know, taps into the source field and creates out of that. Yeah. And uh, when it comes to clothes, imagine a world in which all clothes you ever put on fit perfectly. Oh, man, am I ever looking to that, forward to that. <laughs> I have a very hard-to-fit figure. Seems like nobody have, designs clothes for it. I have time for one more quick question. Um, and then, I, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if it'll be possible uh, to, to meet yet again next week because, I mean, we just have a phenomenal amount of questions that people are thirsty to get answered. Um, I, I, you know, I guess we'll play it by ear, um, but um, I'll, I will extend the invitation um, and hope that maybe next week we can do this one more time. Um, um, because, like I said, there are, just, you know, it, it's just we've got a lot of people waking up, and they have a lot, a lot of questions. So, and I, I really re regret that we have gone as fast as we possibly can, but I don't see us getting to these questions. Um, Provided okay. I have not got something else that I have to do, I, uh, I have no problems coming back again next week. I mean, well, you, you know, this so is much. a very important thing. People have a lot it of curiosity is. about this. There's a lot of misconceptions. In some cases, there's some fear. We definitely yeah. want to take out the fear. We definitely want to emphasize that uh, these beings are real people, just like you and I. Um, and you don't really get a sense of that until you start talking about the down-to-earth, day-to-day stuff. Like, well, right. what do you do with the dirty dishes? You know, is there still sex? Do people still have right. babies? That kind of thing. These these questions you know, are they, important. They may seem like silly questions, but they're they're actually very important to people. So you know, uh, and, and I want to thank our listeners for your questions. People have thought out their questions very well, and um, you know these are relative. These are real concerns of people. You know, um, and fear of the unknown, and and we're he that's what we're here for, and that's why we have invited Tanoth and Sunfire to be with us. And um, that is why Drake speaks of them and and what Tolek uh, tells people and everything. And, and this is what we're trying to prepare everybody for. So, um, you know, you've come to the right place. You've come to the universal voice, and you want to listen. And, and that's what we're here. We want to provide your answers. So, um, uh, you know, ladies, thank you so very much for 
for coming and joining us and to help, you know, for helping uh, to educate and, and, and calm people's fears and, and to help us in, you know, moving forward to where we're going. And um, we can't thank you enough for, for taking your time to spend with us and all of our listeners. Yeah, we're happy to be here and, you know, do what we can to help out. Thank you so much. Okay, um, Drake, do you want to make a closing statement? We have about three minutes left. Yeah, that's real simple. You're done. <laughs> one, of the, one, of the things, one of the things that uh, is important is getting the info out to as many people who would care to listen as is possible. One of the things that people do not realize is that this is your future and you need to know about it. In other words, the future is not going to wait on you. It's going to happen anyway. So uh, what we're trying to do is provide the seatbelt for the roller coaster ride. In other words, get your mind right so that you don't have problems like certain people, you know, having failure to communicate. Um, (laughs) The uh, interesting part about this is twofold. One, you got two people answering things um, in very uh, relatively simplistic ways. I will interject every once in a while, put something in that's just plain old street language, so everybody that uh, is, is hearing it can can fully understand it or grasp it. If I if I feel the necessity to do so, the interesting part about it all is that it all uh, deals with the same thing. Things are changing. We're going to have some stuff come up here shortly that's going to change some uh, outlooks of people. We got some things that are going to change uh, extraordinarily. Uh, and then we got the uh, help of a galactic group that are just trying to give us a hand up so we don't fall off the ladder kind of thing. And I really look at that as a uh, as interesting and a privilege and things like that. And the reason I do is simply because uh, who else do you know of that brings an ambassador on? You will find that. You'll find a... a Just a look, really? Well, you're here, yeah, but you're going to hear things from uh, Tim Buck Two Land that uh, are iffy at best. Uh, this is the uh, one venue uh, where you get to ask questions. And, yeah, they're repetitive, and, yeah, they, they, you know, it gets old. But um, what you got to understand is that there's no stupid question. Even right. if it's been asked before. One of the, the, 